This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers hockey coverage here on the channel today as we get set for game number six between the Oilers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. No, just kidding. Tampa Bay Lightning are facing the Toronto Maple Leafs on my TV right now and the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning are facing elimination against the Toronto Maple Leafs right now. It's 1-1 in the third period with about three uh, third period seven minutes to go that's what i'm trying to get to my apologies a little bit scrambled up this game actually does mean something to me as somebody who had to cheer for the leafs back in the day when the oilers just couldn't make the playoffs in the mid uh 2010s yeah you know what we're cheering a little bit here for the leafs as much as we might be cheering as against the leafs just as much so that's where we're at friends that is of course where we're sitting going into tonight's oilers kings game Game number six, a big one for the Edmonton Oilers, obviously. If you caught the video today, I'm not really concerned that if, if McDavid is banged up, that it's anything serious. If McDavid isn't banged up, then the Kings just have a little bit more fuel to come at him hotter. No, my big thing here, that uh, whole Ryan Rashog tweeting out the video of Connor McDavid shaking his leg out, my whole concern with that is just why afford the Kings any more chances to hack and whack at Connor McDavid? get this series done with right here tonight let's get it done and finish it off and uh have a great rest of the uh playoffs pretty much my plan you know what game six against the kings one more game than i would have preferred but hey what do you what do you say one extra game of doing this i don't mind that at all so we're fine and dandy there all right that's the opening monologue pretty uh pretty messed up as it is it's been a long dang day it's hot outside it's been a Long day, didn't sleep very well last night, so we'll we'll battle through. But Jeffrey, Billy, Peter, Dana, Balance, um, Purple, and Farm Girl, welcome in everybody as we're getting set up for tonight's live stream. Obviously, just getting things underway. You hear? Uh, I don't know if you could hear in the background there the laundry machines dinging away. It's been a busy Saturday here at the house, and now all of a sudden it's eight o'clock. Puck drop for the Oilers as they try to take home this first round series against the LA Kings. So. All right, let's see what we got going here in a matter of moments. So I'm going to kind of control minus, minus, minus my Twitter tab here and get back to regular flow of things as I'm just going to try and refresh things a little bit here and see if we have the lines for tonight's hockey game. Not that I expect them to change much beforehand, but it looks like if you aren't aware that uh, all fans are encouraged to find an alternate location to watch tonight's Edmonton Oilers game, as both the Scotiabank Playoff Plaza and the Ford Canada Tailgate Party have reached capacity. So the Moss Pit and the secondary area have been overfilled with Oilers fans tonight. So what does that mean for us? Well, I expect some folks to be partying with us tonight here on the stream and enjoying things a little bit there as well. So welcome aboard everybody as we get set for this one. 422 to go in this third period between the Leafs and Lightning and I have a feeling this one's probably headed to overtime and it's going to be some kind of dramatic finish for the Toronto Maple Leafs. That is for sure. Whether it be a victory or whether it be a loss, it's going to be dramatic nonetheless. Obviously, overtime always dramatic, so we'll see what comes of that there. But as we're just getting things started again, friends, I don't think there's really much to catch up on. I've already addressed the controversy there of Ryan Rashog sharing that video there's really not much that has happened other than Matthias Janmark potentially being ready. But again, Matthias Janmark being ready, we knew he was going to be back for uh, round two prior to this three-day break. So there's not much realistically being added our way as of yet as Oilers fans, and that's fine. right? The, this is kind of the best part of the year where, you know what, the only thing that matters is the hockey game. That's the coolest part of this time of year, right? Obviously, if an injury happens, that matters, but... You don't want to see an injury happen. You don't want to worry about it. So that's uh, that's kind of the nice part there is as long as the game is good, that's really all you want to be talking about in the playoffs. All right, as we get the going. Um, all right, Northern Farm Girls mod tonight. All right, well, that's fine. And Danny, you go get those mod duties done. That's one thing I got to work on going into next season is figuring out the mods a little bit more. But that's something I almost have to step up and actually take this YouTube thing a little bit more seriously, but 
Uh, Peter, as you're saying, the Oilers are going 11-7, so pretty much as expected tonight. Wouldn't expect anyone coming in. Wouldn't expect anyone coming out for this one. They've got the uh, Game 6 coming off the playing video playing on Twitter right now for the Oilers. Uh, Mika Zibanejad just took the lead for the New York Rangers. And that's really all we know on Twitter. So there's really not much, like I'm saying, friends. This is just going to be a nice, light, get-me-through pregame show to get us into, uh, hopefully, overtime here between Tampa and Toronto. And then from there, we'll just kind of finish it off. Because I wonder what... Um, I wonder what numbers are looking like across the live streams tonight yeah okay there it is hot take hockey john over there streaming to 601 people right now for well what well, could could be overtime between the leafs and lightning so that's where we're sitting right now just kind of getting this one underway i was monitoring everything else that's happening across the space right now because it's a big night in hockey land just to give you an idea of where we're at Toronto and Tampa Bay 1-1 with 3.07 to go in the third. New York, New Jersey, second period, five minutes remaining, 2-1 New York. And LA and Edmonton yet to get underway. About an 8.20 puck drop, I think is what's expected. And then tomorrow, a 4.30 p.m. Mountain Time puck drop for Florida and Boston. 7.30 between Seattle and Colorado. And then everything from there is TBD between everybody else in case it is necessary. So Toronto and Tampa Bay, everybody's getting excited in the uh, plaza there for Toronto. And um, here we go. Let's see. We just saw that. Bling man, that's a kind offer. And we'll uh, obviously see if the Oilers take care of business. That's the biggest thing I care about is the Oilers taking care of business tonight is... As I said in that video, it's just why why give LA any more chances to attack Leon, attack Connor, just get it done, beat them down early, make sure they hang around just enough so as they don't get greasy down the stretch, and just wipe the floor with them and finish this series. That's kind of the idea. Now, and obviously, that's nothing against the Kings fans, nothing against the Kings friends we've made this uh, series so far. It's just, I... Don't want to see an injured Connor McDavid or an injured Leon Dreisel hamper us from getting us where we should be this season. And you know where I think we should be. So it's one of those right now for the Oilers. We just go out there and do this. So in Northern Farm, you got, uh, got Dreisel on as well. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Well, it looks like Stamkos is hobbled here. So interesting as uh, Stamkos gets back to his feet and he's just kind of gingerly skating around the zone looking to make a play along the boards cross check somebody right in so interesting there Davidson welcome in so we're just getting everybody slowly in here and playing like that thank you thank you I, I I saw it right now right right as soon as it popped up I saw five now and I'm like okay what is and then I saw the whole thing light up there so thank you so much for that and now it is really on the Oilers to finish this one off because I want to leave you halfway through. So obviously I, I think the key tonight, and th this is kind of the biggest one here, I'll share what uh, Tim had sent me earlier today because obviously he's been on some kind of streak here the other day. Uh, just to say, let's go over here and say this. First goal doesn't win, but Oilers end series and Leafs choke. So that's, that's the text message from Tim today. So... What I'll tell you there is just to say, um, if the Oilers can somehow win despite not scoring the first goal and the Leafs choke, that's uh, that's another hot streak there for Tim, that's for sure. And we'll see if it comes true again tonight. But uh, obviously, I'd like to see the Oilers score first, win, and see the Leafs win as well. So there's a couple of differences there between me and Tim's hopes and dreams. But obviously, we'll see what comes out of this one tonight for us as, uh, yeah, we're just Get me to game time, get me an Oilers victory, and get this thing done because I really don't want to be up at 8 o'clock starting a stream on Monday night. I will tell you that much. Save me for about Tuesday, Wednesday if preferable. That would be fantastic because I know Vegas is waiting for us, so I'm sure we could actually start the series probably by Wednesday is about where we get going. Drift, welcome in. And blank, yeah. To see an Oilers Leafs final, that would be the dream. Honestly, you know, no matter what, then the cup is coming home to Canada. Both franchises starved for a cup, and you want to talk about a series that would divide the country. 
Wow, that would be the series that absolutely causes pandemonium across Canada. I mean, every every possible place that a game can be played will be absolutely full of people and it would be fantastic to see just for the the nation of Canada as a hockey loving country to see the Leafs and Oilers in the cup final, that's for sure. It looks like we are going to head to overtime here. And LA, you're open for uh, game seven, but if you guys win tonight, well, hey, you know what, great series to you guys as well. And hopefully, hopefully this is it. I know that sounds like I'm counting my chickens before they hatch, but I just, I really just need this to be it. That's kind of the, uh, kind of the situation I find myself in. I just can't, um, can't stomach this anymore going on longer because longer it goes to game seven. I, I mean, I've survived some tense moments in this series. I really don't at all during this playoffs. One of the live stream of game seven until the Stanley Cup final, to be honest with you. And it looks like the refs just missed a high stick on the Leafs. But as we get going here, Dana, what's going on in the Leafs game was one nothing into the third while it is now 1-1 one, one headed to overtime as it is now. And um, that is where we are at. As uh, Peter, you do have that confirmed overtime as the last four seconds click off my clock here. So it will be overtime between the Leafs and Lightning. And Magic, you're hoping that the Leafs win their series. Yeah, I'm hoping that the Leafs can win as well. And I wouldn't even call it cheering for them. It's just, I would love to see this. As I just stated, um, just stated honestly, right? I would love to see Oilers Leafs in the cup final because uh, as Peter asked, I think Peter asked earlier, do the Bruins choke? That's the big thing, right? If the Bruins are out, the next preferable opponent for the Oilers from the East is the Toronto Maple Leafs. And then I think after that, you have to take the Carolina Hurricanes. That's kind of the only other option there. So that would be what we'd get going. Um, yeah, no, the Leafs are a goal away from choking game six here. And then a game away from choking the first round for another year in a row. I, I mean, I've made fun of the Leafs all year long. I've I've had plenty of laughs against my Leafs fan friends at work. But honestly, a lot of us at work right now just need a victory. Anything we can get, any little bit of goodness in our lives is good. And I think for those boys on that side, they could really use, really, really, truly use a Leafs win. That's for sure. So... That's where I'm kind of hoping that the Leafs can win it, the Oilers can win it tonight, and then we can all go to work on Monday happy, healthy, and ready to crush the week because we're going to have to. That's kind of the problem. So we'll see what happens there. And we'll uh, hopefully come away on the better side of it at the end of game time tonight. Nice part is I do get a little bit of a weekend tonight. Uh, because obviously it's Saturday, so I don't have to necessarily go to bed right after the game. That is going to be the best part of the hockey game tonight, is knowing that once this thing's over, I can do a post game, I can do whatever I need to do, and we can go to bed at a whatever time I feel like, wake up at whatever time I feel like, and then we can have a really good time. So, sorry friends, you're just seeing me yammer on about nothing right now if you're just tuning into the stream. My apologies, like I said earlier in the stream, if you weren't here, um, it's just been a long day and I'm just pretty much get me to the final buzzer where the Oilers win That's kind of all I'm in this game for tonight to be honest with you. So Sorry if you're coming for a little bit more trust me. I'll be excited. I'll be calling the play-by-play -play. It'll be the whole regular shebang, but um, <laughs> Peter wouldn't mind that you know as much as I'm saying just get me to the final buzzer I don't care when the final buzzer comes. I don't care if it comes at the end of three or at the end of triple OT it's just at some point, that final buzzer has got to come, and it's got to be an Oilers victory. That's all I care about. And um, Magic, you'd prefer the Oilers play the New York Rangers in the cup final? That, that'd be an all right one as well. I mean, the history there, too, is all right. But I I, I really I, I think it's Boston, Toronto, Carolina in my mind. New York, I guess, if I have to choose a fourth, that wouldn't be a bad fourth. But they got to beat New Jersey tonight to stay around. And Scout, welcome in. He was going to go to the watch party, but had tickets. And then he had other plans. I gave the tickets to some family members. Well, that's uh, good for them to have some tickets because 
that uh, Rogers Place place is buzzing tonight. I mean, it's going to be absolutely electric in there tonight. Again, we all saw the highlights from game four. I can't imagine what game number six is going to bring for the Oilers tonight. And <laughs> Peter, that's a fair answer. Yes, indeed. Uh, doesn't matter who the Oilers play from the East as long as they win. And Odin, this Leafs game has me nervous for the respectable Leafs fans. Well, that's just it, right? As I Like I'm saying, I've got some boys at work that I, I love them to death. Like I go to war with those boys every single day, and day of my life. And I will tell you, they're Leafs fans. That's their biggest mistake in life. And really, I just want to see them be happy on Monday as much as I want to be happy on Monday as well. So that's what we want to see. And uh, LA, yeah, uh, if Tampa wins tonight, I imagine Tampa would indeed also win game seven. That's just the most least thing that could happen. So that's where we're at. And um, <laughs> Shadow, you don't have to go to bed after the first period. You're out in Newfoundland. Yeah, that's fair. What is it in Newfoundland right now? It would be about 11 o'clock. So uh, do I have that right? No, it would be, uh, would it be, would it actually be, uh, yeah, no. Would it be midnight in Newfoundland right now? No, that doesn't make sense. Hold on, let me calculate. Yeah, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock is right. That's right. That's right. Sorry, that's my bad. I just couldn't calculate time for a moment. Davidson's got our first big Go Oilers Go chant of the night in there. I like to see it. And uh, Goat, thank you so much for being along for the ride yet again, tuning in from the Philippines. And that's our first international throw and shout out of the night so i know we'll have plenty throughout the rest of the night but uh appreciate you being along for the ride still after all this time too it's not like you've been here for just two or three days either um margaret welcome back in back watching from manitoba how your jersey on since 9 30 this morning i've been out and about in calgary i don't even think i was wearing anything oilers today i was going to wear my Connor mcdavid socks today but i think i'm going to save that for a little bit bigger of an occasion so hopefully we can figure it out from there that we don't need that bigger occasion on monday and we can just win this series right here right now and just not worry about it come monday play the uh play the vegas golden knights tuesday wednesday and just go from there uh, Brock and everybody else watching back home that's wondering if you're going to be able to watch the game on here unfortunately not I wish I could but uh, copyright is what it is and as somebody who does make money off of YouTube it's just kind of one of those things I'm not willing to screw around with because it will screw me longer term that's for sure so all right oh sorry let's get this going and Peter Anton Slepershev won the Gargarin Cup over in uh, the uh, KHL. That's interesting, right? I think there's been a couple of players that have won that cup over the past few years, former Oilers. And you're in Mexico really wanting to watch the game, Brock. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's definitely something I've heard a lot of this past few weeks is everybody being down there in Mexico. So um, I'm, I would love to be down in Mexico. <laughs> Just, just to be honest with you, that's for sure. But uh, best of luck definitely on finding a stream. And I hope you do because this tonight is hopefully going to be a special night for us Edmonton Oilers fans. Alan, welcome back in. Glad to have you along again tonight. And uh, Hopefully it's going to be another memorable broadcast. Hopefully maybe a little bit of that Zach Hyman jumping out of my chair goal celebration again tonight. That wouldn't be, um, that wouldn't be bad at all if that was the case. And Scotty, yeah, they have that weird half-hour time zone over there in Newfoundland that is very true Smurfy welcome in and uh, we are just getting things rolling here friends I'm seeing everybody just starting to trickle into the live stream here just to say we are aiming for that 1500 hours watched again tonight so long ways to go and as Peter said maybe that's why I'm hoping for triple overtime tonight we're already at 17 hours out of that so we are well on our way tonight already, so don't you worry. We'll get there in no time flat. And uh, hopefully for the Leafs and Lightning, they uh, can figure it out here as well. All right, let me flip television sets. You know what? I care about the Leafs and Lightning a little bit, but I care about the Oilers and the Kings a little bit more. So let's go over here. As we're going to go here and watch channel. Perfect. It looks like they're going to play the Leafs and Lightning on this channel for now and then flip over after the fact. So 
All right, we're getting things settled up here, friends. Of course, I've got the bio steel. Like I said, it was the peach bio steel, so we're trying to crush this off. It was three peach bio steel, four cherry lime. We're just hoping the Oilers come up and I can save that first peach bio steel for game number one against the Vegas Golden Knights on whatever Tuesday, Wednesday it is. It's kind of the hope anyway. As uh, I think I echo all your sentiments back home right now tonight. Just very excited for this one to get underway. If you weren't in the live stream about 5-10 minutes ago, you would have missed me saying I just want to get to the final buzzer and get this one done because I really just want to see the Oilers win, not have to stress about it, and just be done for this series and move on to round two. Job tonight, so there we go. It looks like reconnection was successful, so we should be back to live streaming here. My apologies, as you might have just cut out there for a brief moment, as uh, it appears I just cut out there as, there we go, that's, we're back, never mind, so. We're good there, and this one is looking to be the uh, replay of the Leafs and Habs from years previous. And then this is the uh, replay here against Jack Campbell in uh, the playoffs last year. So interesting right there, that's for sure. Patrick, good evening, sir. As we've been talking about that Leafs-Lightning game in the background, I wonder who you got winning this uh, game six. I know you didn't uh, text me that. You just told me it was good round one hockey. So now we'll we'll see if it's going to be good round uh, one hockey for the Leafs to win it in overtime or what. I'd be interested to find out. As the Leafs winning would be a huge, huge get, that is for sure. And Patrick is about to start streaming. So as soon as he does, friends, you'll be able to catch his stream at the top of my chat. You'll be able to go over to his stream via the link that I'll have posted there in a matter of moments. As we are just about ready to get things rolling here. For one, one by 60. So we continue to creep up on the minutes watched as we're averaging about this part of the stream where we average about an hour per minute I've streamed. So that's really fun to be sitting there watching that happen already uh, early on on this stream. Like I said, guys, sorry, I, I'm so lackluster here to begin this pregame. It's been a long, long day. It's been a long, long week, and obviously I was hoping it would finish off a little bit better than it did on Friday, but we'll just battle through and make the most of it here on the live stream today and really have ourselves a good, good night. So again, friends, but I will appeal to you right now. I've got 107 of you watching back home right now. I haven't appealed yet for you to hit that like button tonight on the stream. If you could leave a like on the stream, that would be great. Of course, we want to try and get all our friends in here tonight as many of us as possible to hopefully close out this series for the Oilers. And I don't want to depend on overtime for that to happen. I would prefer we do that right here, right now, as early as possible if we can. So definitely, if you haven't had a chance yet to hit that like button, that would be greatly appreciated. As they've got the old Jacques Plante hockey card coming out for the uh, WHA Oilers back in the day. So I'm going to go over here and just quickly that up here and let's go over here and share bing bang and copy that over and go back to my stream here for a moment and for some reason it doesn't want to give me my stream now let's go over here let's go here friends sorry apologies for you those of you watching right now and let's go here and <laughs> you know that's hilarious that that uh got uh held up And let's go here, bang, done and dusted. And let's pin that there, pin message, good to go. So, perfect. Good to rock and roll, friends. The Maple Leafs, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Oilers, the LA Kings. That is our action tonight, that is for sure. And go, thank you so much for that. As definitely everybody who's hit the like button, thank you again, very much so appreciated. It's just one of those things that YouTube likes to know about and Obviously, that helps everything get going where it needs to get going. So, uh, see, as you're saying, yeah, congratulations to Dallas and Carolina for moving on to round two. Yeah, there's um, there's a ton of teams uh, that are ready to rock and roll for these second round of the playoffs. Obviously, 
Dallas and Carolina are there. The Oilers are on the cusp. So are the Bruins. So are, well, Bruins and Panthers. So are the Toronto Maple Leafs. There's a whole bunch of teams that are just about there or are facing Game 7s. And that's the best part of this part of the series in Round 1. So we're about to start seeing dominoes fall as we have already with Dallas and Carolina. So, real welcome in as we are getting things ready to rock and roll. And again, friends, too. If you haven't already uh, looked at the 50-50, if you are of age to buy 50-50s here in Alberta, definitely make sure to do that because uh, apparently, according to all those hockey broadcasters on Twitter today, there is a ton of money to be won with the Oilers 50-50 tonight. That is for sure. So, Just wanted to pass that along as we continue to rock and roll into this... Um, this pregame, we're just about to the 8 o'clock minute, which means we're, or 8 o'clock hour, which just means if the dog would stop freaking out, we're about ready to rock and roll for this hockey game tonight. If the dog would stop freaking out and distracting me, I'm trying to figure out what he's freaking out about. Doesn't sound like anyone's in the house or anything, so must just be somebody biking down the road or something like that. He loves to freak out with bikes, so... Give me a second here, friends. What I'm actually going to go do is I'm going to run upstairs and go check to see what he's freaking out about. That would probably be a good thing to do, to be honest with you. I'll be right, right back. Right now, I'll just leave you on this. This is the first time you're going to see this tonight. I promise you that you will not have seen the last of it by the time I take it down. If you haven't had a chance yet, please do. And I will be right, right back. All right, let's keep rocking and rolling here, friends. Sorry, my apologies. Went upstairs, changed the laundry over, got the dog dealt with. We are good to go. So Leafs and Lightning OT is starting right now. So that's good to hear. And as everybody's got the programming alert at their bottom of their television, Maple Leafs at Lightning OT is available on Sportsnet East, Ontario, Pacific, and CBC. So... Good to know we still got Sportsnet West for us Oilers fans, right? As everybody's kind of got their opinions on that in the chat right now. But obviously we are going to try and get this one underway. And with that, that means we have to welcome in the little three-legged buddy tonight as he is going to come down here nice and early. Obviously I'm the only one home right now, so he is going to come downstairs and come cuddle as we'll have an early appearance from our favorite cat on the live stream here. Hey, does that, that feel good to be your, somebody's favorite, little buddy? Does that feel good to be somebody's favorite? Hmm? You're everybody's favorite. As You know what? Honestly, if any of you ever came to see him, he would, uh, he would not be caught dead being visible, that's for sure. So it's definitely nice to see uh Nice to see him up here nice and early. Come on, buddy. Just cuddle up. Cuddle up, buddy. Because we should be ready to rock and roll here in the matter of moments, friends. Uh, the Oilers are starting Stuart Skinner tonight. you got to be aware of that. Jonas Corposalo starts for the LA Kings after getting pulled last game. So that's where we're kind of sitting right now for the Oilers and Kings. Both starting goaltenders pulled in back-to-back -back games. Phoenix Copley, though, definitely got lit up much, much, much more than Jack Campbell did in his game for the Oilers so far in a backup role. 
as this is where we're at we're just getting mr little kitty here all cuddled up as i don't know if you guys have seen this when i've shared him on the stream he does have a little bald patch on his belly he had a little bit of an injury there from another cat a while back and it's just starting to heal up real nice with fur coming in and stuff so uh yeah no it's definitely kind of my favorite little spot to pet on him it's just so nice and nice and uh, nice little fur there i must say it's just different than petting the rest of the kitty hey anybody yeah good kitty all right, anyway, me and my cats aside, friends, as we are just about ready to get this Oilers game officially underway. We're about 20 minutes away from puck drop, which means we're about 14 minutes away from things flipping over to the live Crypto.com Arena broadcast stuff for this live stream tonight. And uh, Justin, welcome in. And as there it is. And I'm not sure what that comment is, so I'm just going to leave that one alone there, Chuck. But, yeah, we are getting going here tonight, friends, as we are just about ready for this one. And like I said, if you're hearing me repeat myself and go in circles tonight, it is simply, quite honestly, just one of those situations where I want to go out there and just start the stream, literally watch the puck drop, and zonk out for about three hours until the final buzzer blows and the Oilers have won the hockey game. That's where I'm at tonight. Bill, welcome into tonight's live stream as well as we are getting things set up. And I do have, I do have a lineup note here as I'm seeing that. According to Daniel Nugent Bowman on Twitter, the Edmonton Oilers will ice the same lineup to start that won them game six in Edmonton. So it'll be the same 11-7 combination. Nobody's injured. Everybody is good to go. And it looks like um, it looks like Greta Barr for Oilers Nation is bumping and thumping tonight. As whoever uh, that's big milk with the old wristwatch update saying that the viewing party is causing high sound levels that could cause temporary hearing loss for the time being. And let's see, Jack Michaels, as he arrived. Um, oh. All right, hold on. Jack Michaels also with a big note here. As he arrived at the broadcast location in L.A., he noticed the timing card in L.A. had puck drop scheduled for game six at 8.10 p.m. Mountain Time, 10 minutes earlier than what we originally had in mind. So this game is going to get up and underway earlier than expected. And Mark, you are, I hope you're not pulling my chain here that Toronto has just won. Did Toronto win it? Leafs did it. Oh my goodness. That's huge. That is, that is absolutely massive. That is absolutely like, I mean, I don't know how well you know my full story here doing the Oilers stuff and doing the uh, hockey thing my entire life, but back in the Phil Kessel days, back in the uh, back in the days when the Toronto Maple Leafs were the only Canadian team making the playoffs or at least surviving more than four games, I cheered pretty heavily for the Toronto Maple Leafs and to hear now that they have taken home their first round series victory that's been so long awaited. That is absolutely unreal, friends. That is absolutely unreal. So, all right. That's where we start. The Leafs have done it, so it's our turn now tonight. And then everybody at work will be nice and happy on Monday morning. So that's fantastic to see that the Leafs have been able to do that. The Oilers are taking the ice here. We're 10 minutes ahead of schedule tonight in L.A., which is absolutely fantastic. Bradley, welcome in. And I'm just trying to catch everybody else as we get going. Mark, I think I caught you there with that. And uh, Anthony, welcome in as well in Gamer. Let's go. So, you know what? The Oilers just have to get the job done in the late game tonight on Hockey Night in Canada and get this one finished off. The Toronto Maple Leafs winning their first round series. Now the LA Kings stand one game in the way of the Edmonton Oilers from graduating on to the second round and punching their ticket. So, the... Leafs still don't know who they're going to face. Will it be Florida? Will it be 
Boston. That'll be the interesting outcome for them here tonight to determine what ends up happening for them tomorrow night as they've won their series. But now you just have to figure out who comes on the other side between Boston and Florida. Nugent Hopkins, he's got the mustache and the little under the lip thingy going on there. So we'll see what uh, Mr. Ryan Nugent Hopkins has for us throughout the rest of these playoffs with the playoff facial hair as we've seen years previous. Jonas Corposalo in net for the LA Kings. And then you've got Nick Bugstad, Cody Cece, Zach Hyman, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins on the blue line for the Edmonton Oilers as we get ready here for this one as the LA Kings fans all in the stands Proud in all colors. That's the big thing. The LA Kings have a ton of different colors over franchise history. So they have the shiny silver. They have the big silver. They have the black. They have the white. They have the purple. They have the yellow. I think they've got some other colors mishmashed in there too if you're not paying attention. So the purple in a different variation, I think. So all right, here we go. We've got the hero of the game, and then that will conclude matters here for... The pregame is we'll sing the anthems and get this Edmonton Oilers game underway. Jeffrey almost forgot to do it in <laughs> Lost Watching Weird Ali Yankovic videos. That's all good. And uh, Wilner, well, welcome in as well as we're getting everybody aboard for. Game number six today, friends. I think based on all the hoopla that we've seen about Connor McDavid here, then we could probably see another Connor McDavid classic tonight. That much is for sure if he wants to come out and do his thing this evening as we'll have the national anthems once again. As it's getting things booted up here and there is Hannah Davey once again singing the national anthem at tonight's hockey game between the LA Kings and the Edmonton Oilers. Plenty of time here to get things going. Derek, welcome in. Awesome. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that very, very much. And thank you for the kind words. That means a whole ton as I think it's been a fantastic journey here this year, to be honest with you. And it's been a really fun, um, really fun go. This has been the most complete Oilers season I've had doing this thing. Obviously, a year with playoffs, a full year of coverage, all that. But it's been fantastic. And you guys back home have been absolutely phenomenal all year. So, Derek, once again, thank you to you. And uh, YouTube, of course, puts you up there on the big board. So we'll hold that for a few moments. And uh, yes, the Leafs have won their first round series and they are headed on to the second round of the playoffs for the first time since I don't even know when because honestly I probably wasn't even a hockey fan at that point yet. So that's how crazy that is to me. So Evan, welcome in. You're going for the Kings. That is very, very... Uh, very okay with me as I think, you know what, tonight we're going to need a big community effort here from both Kings fans and Oilers fans to hopefully send off this series in proper pandemonium with hopefully an OT thriller for the Oilers winning it back to send us home with the series. So that's where we're at. And uh, at least won a first round game and act like they won the cup. Uh, you know, <laughs> Bob Wilner, it's a big... Uh, big time thing for them is they needed to win that first round and get on to the second round because maybe just maybe that's where we're at in breaking that 56 or whatever year streak it's been we're on to the star spangled banner right now friends as we are just about ready to rock and roll game number six between the oilers and kings as uh derek once again i do i do appreciate the very kind words there and uh, yeah, we are just about ready to do this, friends. 2004 was the last time. Well, that would have missed me just there at the start of 05, 06. Obviously, the lockout didn't help things. That Honestly, right, if you don't have that lockout year, what becomes of me as a hockey fan? Who knows? Um, absolute welcome in. That's I, I like that name. I like that name. Going for the Kings. Dean, good evening to you. Frank, going for the Kings as well. Um, newer hockey fan, but uh, loving the sport and I learn and watch. That is awesome to hear. Jack, welcome in. Are the Oilers playing tonight? Well, they are not yet, but they're about to be. About to be. As we should be almost ready to rock and roll here. Tough cough, welcome in. As here we go. We are going to hear the final notes of the Star Spangled Banner, my friends. And we are going to crush this one off right here, right now, to get this one done and dusted as we are going to have the 
Final Tones finished and now Crypto.com Arena is going to bring us home for this big time hockey game now. That looks like a whole complex they've got there at uh, Crypto.com Arena. I don't even know how that all functions there. I don't know if that's all parkades or what. I'd actually have to understand all that. Robin, welcome in. Human, welcome in. And here we go. Stuart Skinner, 2-2 two two this series. 331 goals against average and an 884 save percentage. He is looking to improve those numbers tonight. We know that much for sure. Jonas Corposalo, 2-3, three, 349 goals against average and a 904 save percentage. So he as well is looking to get this one done here tonight for the LA Kings. As you said, force game seven. As we're going to get this one rolling as the LA Kings have Will Ferrell beating on the drums with the big face makeup. That was a big thing when we went back to Edmonton for game five. Face-offs down, Hyman's won it back, CeCe fishes it out of the crowd, and Darnell Nurse will get us started. Up the boards off of Zach Hyman, bounces around there, Hyman looks for this puck, freed up there by Victor Arvidsson, Arvidsson fires it through the middle of the ice over to Kempe. Kempe's going to get one down, tipped off the skates or stick of Kopitar. Stuart Skinner, though, the save, and this will be played back into the neutral zone by the LA Kings. Kopitar flips it in down the length of the ice. Kempe battling there against CC Nurse to the far side. Comes out to play the puck to Nugent Hopkins, who clamps it off the boards for a brief moment. Now freed up to CC. CC now up the boards. Misses the pass, and that will be an icing call against the Edmonton Oilers. So it took us, one an extra five seconds of the normal dice, the puck to start the game. Don't mind me, I'll take that all day, as that's a pretty good start right there. As Bert, welcome in. Um, as I'm seeing everybody tuning in, J Dog, welcome in. And uh, here we go. Let's get this rocking and rolling. 1917 to go here in this first period of play. Deno on the ice now with Aya Fallow. And Scott, welcome in as well. As I just caught you before the puck came down, as here's Trevor Moore wheeling around the zone. He's going to wheel to the far side post, wrap around, fails. Stuart Skinner makes the save and will have a stoppage in play. Just look at he split right off that face off as we are underway and rolling to begin tonight's hockey game. That is for sure as we are ready to rock what is going to be a huge, huge, huge game tonight. Uh, honestly, to do this one justice to me, myself as a hockey fan, that's going to be, uh, it's going to be the hardest part. Trying to bring it home to you and bring it home to myself at the same time. To no waved over the faceoff dot. Aya Fallow will take the faceoff one back by Connor McDavid. He's having no problems getting the legs moving here. If you could just get off the LA Kings player, Drysdale, freeing that puck up. Kicked off the boards to Drysdale by Kane. Drysdale still battling. He'll rip it around the boards high to Evan Bouchard. Bouchard across the blue to Matias Eckholm. The shot save made by Corpus Sallow. And we will have the freeze of the puck. And Lexi, is uh, game is actually live. Yes, yes, the game is actually live. I promise you that much. Yo, he's fed. Okay, all right, here we go. Matias Ekholm will now take the face off at the Oilers' offensive blue line. He gets the puck back off the face off win from McDavid. Bouchard down over to Connor McDavid. He'll wheel and deal around the zone. McDavid with open ice. Shoots! Oh, denied there by Corpus Allo, and now Evander Kane gets it back to the blue line. Ekholm over to Bouchard. Bouchard loading it up. Tipped in front. Scores! Oh, let's go. We'll start this one off in front as Connor McDavid scores the goal on the tip. Right in front from Evan Bouchard, and the Oilers take the 1-0 lead. Just a minute and a half into this hockey game. As that one shot on, and you just watch how the Oilers recovered that puck. Evander Kane forces it back. Bouchard gets into a good shooting lane. Somehow gets it through over to Connor McDavid's tip of the stick. And look at that. Bouchard was looking for that. That was a shot pass. And Evan Bouchard puts it right on the tape of Connor McDavid, who answers it just like that to get it going here. one nothing in this first period. As this one comes around in the near side, Dursey gets battling there, and McLeod battles it free for a brief moment in the Kings zone. The Oilers up and running right off the start now, up 1-0 as this hops in behind the net. Puck bounces a couple of times there against Stuart Skinner to the near side corner. The Oilers still battling, trying to free it up as Velarde will pick this one up off the end boards. Velarde to the far side now. As he'll have poked off his stick. Warren Fogel a good poke. The Kings miscued the one-timer. And then Fogel a good stick again. 
as the shot comes in. Save made by... Oh, excuse me. Sorry, that's the mile still coming up. As a save made by Skinner there. And Walker has to play it all the way back down in his own zone. 17.46 to go here in this first period. Drew Doughty will play this one in behind his own net with a 1-0 Edmonton Oilers lead early on in this one. I like to see it. The Oilers trying to do their best job of winning this one. Bouchard, his seventh assist. Ekholm's fourth assist of the playoffs already. We are absolutely crushing along as here's Yamamoto feeding it over. And the Oilers will plow this one into the offensive zone as it's going to be played back by the Kings. There is an offside against the Oilers for the delayed few moments as Broberg will chop this one free to Ekholm. Ekholm now across and gets it up to Leon Drysaddle. Drysaddle over the blue line. He's going to peel back to the blue line again in the Kings zone. Now fires the shot to flex wide of the net. As this one's going to come back to the point. Cody Cece comes down low as this one will go across to Yamamoto. And that is not going to work out for the Oilers. Picked up now by Anze Kopitar. And I'm, I'm struggling here to start out of the gate. I'll be honest with you. 16.45 to go. That's just, like I said. I'm just drop the puck. Tell me when the game's over. The Oilers won. That's all that I care about tonight, realistically speaking. Kings have iced the puck, though. 16.35 to go in this first period. Things are moving along just fine. And what I want to tell you, friends, if you're new to the channel right now, I will flash this a couple of times throughout the stream, more than a couple of times. But I want you to definitely hit that subscribe button here tonight as we get set for hopefully round two after tonight, if not game seven. Either way, big game coming up next game out. And secondary, if you haven't yet left a like on the stream, I would greatly appreciate that as that would be fantastic to get even more of us in here. We're just about up to 400 of us watching live here together. So let's get it rocking and rolling here by the end of the period. 16.30 to go in this first period. Back to action Anze Kopitar plays it into the middle. Arvidsson across the blue line. He's going to have it poked off his stick by Darnell Nurse. This one now for Kopitar. He's going to spin fire. Save made by Skinner. And an uncomfortable one. Kicking the pad out against the post. But still made it as this one's going to be fired down off the boards. Bugstad's going to tip this one around to Hyman. Hyman's going to rip it off the high boards back to Darnell Nurse. The shot comes down low. Can't get it going. And now back to the high point. For the Kings to flip it back into the neutral zone as with 15.58 to go here in the first period the Kings lead in shot department that's what they're doing so far they lead 4-3 in the shot department 15.50 as Connor McDavid picks this puck up he blitzes across the blue line Kings though as they do double team him and peel the puck off his stick and now the others will poke this one free to Evan Bouchard Bouchard's battling against a couple of players and that one oh my goodness I don't know where that one missed, but that was a big time save. I hope for Stuart Skinner as that one just went just so far wide. And this one will come back into the LA Kings zone as the Kings are absolutely blitzing here in this start of this first period. The Oilers got the lead. Great play to get the lead, but the Kings want to tie this one up. And you can sense the urgency and everything they're doing in the Oilers zone so far to begin this game as the Oilers peel free a puck. Nice move there by Evander Kane. Coming back the other way. Kane down the wing. The shot save made by Corpus Allo. 14.57 to go as Roy will pick up the puck and clear down the length of the ice. Back to Brett Kulak. Kulak flips it up off the boards. Picked up there by Byfield. Pass comes to the interior. Byfield skates through four Oilers, but the Oilers knock it off his stick. Coming back the other way now is Warren Fogel ripping the shot. Denied there by Doughty. Fogel bats it open to the free point. And this one comes right in front. Mm, man, I'm jumping a lot. I just want this game to be over. Like I said, I just need this to be a victory. Puck comes way out of play into the uh, into the stands, and that one will be a stopped in play with 14 and a half to go here in this first period of play. So, all right, let's get this one going here. So that just pops right off of. Iafalo in front, I believe. Iafalo gets that shot right off of Stuart Skinner and just barely, barely, barely made the save right there. So, all right. Hopefully we get it going here. Iafalo, one goal, three shots in game number five. 14, 20 to go here in this first period of play. Cody Cece is going to backhand this one off the boards, free it up over the zone. The Kings can't touch that puck. And now back the other way. As coming is Connor McDavid, the shot fired, save made. McDavid is going to be battled to the ice. 
That's the first heavy hit. Oh my goodness, Clint Costin just missing it in front on a little dipsy doodle around Jonas Corposalo and then Philip Broberg tips it into the stands and it goes up out of play. Chris, yes, the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs have moved on to round two for the first time since 2004. That is the big news to start tonight and I promise you the big news will be the Edmonton Oilers advancing to round two by the end of tonight. I promise you that. As hopefully uh, the Oilers can get things going. So, all right. Uh, Jason, welcome in. And Theo, welcome in as well as I'm just seeing you guys for the first time. And to those of you right now watching back home, friends, welcome aboard. Just saw we crossed 500 viewers live here on the stream. I just want to say to those of you wondering why I can't show the game or anything, it's copyright material. And I will tell you, no one in the sports universe on YouTube is more stringent on copyright restrictions than the NHL. I've gotten two copyright live stream strikes for doing exactly what I'm doing right now, right? None of this is against copyright for the NHL, but I've gotten strikes anyways. So just to explain to you, that would explain why I won't show the game. I got a little bit too much to lose if I do. So well, let's get it going here, friends, as we are crushing along. Kaylee, welcome in. Lowell, welcome in. And uh, yeah, Ruby, welcome in as well. And hopefully, friends, we can get things rolling here. Uh, as we are off and running. The Oilers are already up one nothing to begin this game. Just to recap that, in case I forget to recap it in the intermission, Connor McDavid's third of the series, his ninth point, Evan Bouchard's seventh assist, and Matthias Ekholm's fourth assist as well. So it's been a big series for all of those guys right now. So hopefully they all continue. And Scotty, to your, uh, to your uh, comment there as well, uh, Costin, that was close. Yeah, that Costin chance was just off the uh, just off the outside by that much. It was very, very close to being something huge. Clem Costin, one goal and five shots in the series, but that Costin goal was a big one. And you look at how tight that one was, just glances off the post outside. So um, that's where we're at. So now let's get this going back into action. Costin's growing the mustache too. It's pretty nice. As Nugent Hopkins will take the face off here with Bugstad and Zach Hyman. Face off one back by the Oilers. Darnell Nurse fires the shot again, just misses wide. And I feel like I'm going to be looking at my ceiling half the game tonight. How antsy I am to see that puck go in the back of the net. As here's Bugstad wheeling and dealing. Back to the point near side now, Cody Cece. He'll come back down low to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins goes down low. And the Kings were able to clear for a brief moment. Oilers fired it back in. Corpus Salo bangs it off the boards. Hyman's able to play this one here. And this is going to be the Kings regaining it in their own zone after the puck bounced around a couple of times. Kempe skating through the neutral zone. A couple of head fakes able to make it through. And then fire the puck off the ankles of Cody Cece up out of play. And we will have a stoppage in play, friends. And uh, Potagon, uh, yes, you guys did. The Toronto Maple Leafs have moved on to round two. And now we just eagerly await to see the Oilers doing exactly that here tonight against the LA Kings. So uh, the series, Chris, is at 3-2 for the Oilers. Should they win, they advance. If the Kings win, they force the almighty game seven. So we'll see what comes of it. As I think we're going to, and as I have really no option in this, as I see him down here already, he just grabbed a little bit of a snack as the Kings fire a shot towards the net. For those of you watching back home, welcome in the cat as he's going to do his thing here for us. Two on one for the Oilers back the other way. Dry settle and McDavid. McDavid shoots. Oh my goodness. Corpus Salo just sticks right there with him and makes the save. As that was a big time stop for Jonas Corpus Salo. And the LA Kings who had Connor and Leon bearing down on a two on one with all the time in the world. As this one's going to be shot save made by Stuart Skinner now. 12.40 to go. Dry still picks this puck up onto the tape of Connor McDavid. McDavid busting through. Kane wires a shot blocked in front. As now setting up the attack is Connor McDavid back to Matthias Ekholm. Shot down low to Evander Kane. Kane battling there with Drysaddle. Drysaddle trying to battle this one back to Kane. Can't do it. King's able to readjust and get it going back the other way. 12 18 to go here in this first period of play. Kulak's going to pick up the puck in his own zone, set up the attack, and get ready to rock and roll. As this one's going to come back the other way as the Oilers get going through the neutral zone. Ryan McLeod off to the side to Warren Fogel. Shot 
over top of the net as it comes back to the blue line. Dayarnay down low. And now nice one-timer shot from Derek Ryan blocked in front. Dayarnay can't fight it out of his skates. And now he's going to get turned around. Here's the Kings back to the blue line. Dursey's going to fire this shot. And somehow, someway, it goes in the back of the net. The only way I know that is uh, that was just a lot of lights and a lot of cheering there for the LA Kings. There's a lot of crowd in front, and that puck ended up finding its way in the back of the net as Dursey somehow fired that one from the point and just wired it through 11.47 to go here in this first period, and it's now 1-1 as we're going to replay, and they're going to go all the way back to Connor McDavid not passing the puck over to Leon Dreisaitl on that two-on-one and here's Kevin Fiala making a great play to the point and then that one just finds itself through traffic as Kulak just couldn't seal off and get in the lane and uh, Vinny Dayarnay obviously just didn't backtrack properly but that one goes right through under the pad of Stuart Skinner we're 1-1 one, one. all right we don't mind that at all 11.37 to go yeah it's game six as much as I want the Oilers to win doesn't mean I don't want any drama right as they're going to come back the other way here and get across the line. The shot fired over top of the net there by Dry Settle. As 11.24 to go here in this first period of play. The Oilers will continue to work this puck. Broberg down low to Dry Settle. Dry Settle is going to work this one around the boards now to, I believe, Costin. Is that Costin out there? It is with Yamamoto and Dry Settle. Dry Settle off the boards. He's going to work this one back to the point now. Down low to Darnell Nurse. Who Nice little pivot move. That was a beauty. Beauty move there by Darnell Nurse to get that puck down low as the Oilers continue to work heavy in the zone here. Dry settle hard against the boards as he's going to get pivot at the blue line one more time. Go down low as he's got Lazat beat. And this one's going to go back to the high point cut off there. And coming back the other way is Grunstrom now off the boards. So this one comes back down low to Darnell Nurse around the boards high. Shot right into the middle looking for Hyman from, I believe, Nugent Hopkins. Couldn't connect. Ten and a half minutes to go here in this first period of play. The LA Kings will fire this one up the boards into the Oilers' end. And that somehow still plays on as it frees up for Zach Hyman. Can't get it out to the near side boards in the Oilers' zone. Brett Kulak frees it up and bats it up the boards. Scott, I do apologize, but he did something good there. Getting it out of the zone that time out. For the Oilers now on defense for the Oilers as it was a mini breakaway for some reason. As Kulak and CeCe were both beat to the puck. And here's Bugstad now across the line. He fires a pass across. Beat to that puck is Nugent Hopkins. Back the other way is Arvidsson. And this game is just going back and forth and got some intensity to it now. As both teams looking for that next goal. Stuart Skinner makes a big save. Second one there as Fiala and Byfield both get assists on that goal from Sean Dursey. So, all right, good to go. That is a big time get for the LA Kings to tie this one up 1-1. One, one. So, that's probably my punishment for not finishing the bio skill prior to puck drop. That's, I'll blame myself there, friends. And there we go. Lene, yes, uh, Mr. Darnell Nurse is number 25. And I just want to say here, friends, we're on commercial break, so I'll give you a quick update on the back end numbers to give you an idea of where we're sitting after only about an hour of live streaming. We're already at 200 hours watched, so we are crushing along very well tonight. And again, friends, if you haven't had the chance tonight yet to hit that subscribe button, right? Heaven forbid there's a game seven for us Oilers fans, but for you Kings fans back home, I know that's exactly what you're cheering for. So if you want to come back for game seven or you want to tune in and cheer against the Vegas Golden Knights, alongside us in round number two. I would love to have you hit that subscribe button and be part of this hopefully magical run for the Edmonton Oilers. And just to give you an idea here too of where we're sitting entering tonight's hockey game, I was at 12,080 subscribers. We're now up to 12,095. So we're off and running tonight, already up 15 and we have a chance in the next five subscribers, hopefully I action five of you in the chat somewhere to get into, um, into the subscribe column and obviously change things here so all right joe good evening to you and uh boston good evening to you as well as the toronto maple leafs friends i i will see this chat all night uh, they finally break the curse and they have moved on to round number two that is huge news 
and uh, fill up was that goal on Dayarnay. Not necessarily, like obviously he allowed the zone entry, but I wouldn't really blame him for one getting through Stuart Skinner the way it did, I guess, if that makes sense. That would be how I'd try to put it. But here we go, friends. We are getting things going with 9.43 to go here in the first period of play. 1-1 one, one between the Kings and Oilers as the face-off to the left to Stuart Skinner. I'm still petting the cap, by the way. I'm sure you can see my hands and arms just doing some flaily things. This puck's going to come in behind the net. Nice play by Ekholm to bat it off the boards to Drysdale and then picked up now by Connor McDavid across the blue line over to Evander Kane. Risks the shot. Goes up over top and Corpusallo. Not sure where that one was. And this will be an offside at the Kings blue line. So we'll have another stop and play here to start this back half of this first period as it's been an absolute very interesting, interesting start to this hockey game. Obviously, we've got a good chance that this game gets out of hand towards the end, but... Is it out of hand as in scoring goals or out of hand as in just really good hockey all the way home? So, all right. Liz Matthew, welcome in. As this one will come back free for Bouchard off the face-off win. He'll rim it into the zone. Nice play by Roy there. Just again, those backhands are so critical because they usually go awry. And thankfully so far, it's been good for... Uh, the Oilers and Kings making some good backhand plays so far to start this hockey game. Picking it up now. Dry settle across the blue line. He's going to get it back to Bouchard. Oh my goodness. If that was Connor, it's back in the net. But Kane just missed finding the Ekholm, who was not aware of the situation in front of the net. 8.50 to go here in this first period of play. As this one's going to come free now for the Kings at the Oilers line. Dursey across the line. He's going to free it up right into the middle. Looking for Velarde, couldn't do it. Velarde battling Ekholm. Now Fogel behind the net gets it over to Ekholm. And he'll play it ahead now. Speeding away is Ryan McLeod. And I love Ryan McLeod, man. I love how he looks exactly like Connor on the ice sometimes. As this one comes over to Vinny DeHarnay, the shot tipped in front. What a tip there by Derek Ryan. That was a huge one in front. Just could not find the back of the net. And DeHarnay, the big man, hustles all the way back for the icing call against the LA Kings with 8.18 to go here in the first period. Derek Ryan can't believe he was stonewalled there. Dayarnay fired this shot. Nice tip there by Derek Ryan. And that's what they do. Bradley, welcome in. Leo, welcome in. And uh, George, welcome in as well. So, all right, let's get this going. We are just about set for the last eight minutes of this period. One goal on eight shots for Derek Ryan this period. I would love... To see someone like Derek Ryan or Ryan McLeod or Warren Fogle, this line that's out there right now, get this next goal as this one's going to come back as Ryan McLeod plays this one high. Another tip in front goes onto a King's stick. This one's going to go to the near side. Battle there is Walker, and now the Oilers get into this puck early at the center ice line. Still battling it around, and it'll come deep into the Oilers' end. Brett Kulak picks it up. He'll backhand it up to... Vinny DeHarnay as this one will be Ryan McLeod going across to clean Costin. Costin down the wing to the middle of the ice. He'll fire a shot. Scores! Oh, I'm sorry, Cap. Let's go! Clean Costin. I, I, I said I wanted somebody. Somebody like a Ryan McLeod or a Derek Ryan. How about clean Costin to score the big goal that makes it 2-1? They were featuring him off the start of the hockey game where he has one goal in this series. And both goals in this series for Clem Costin have been absolutely huge. And for a guy that just at the end of the season could not seem to find the back of the net, he's found it twice here in six games. And both of them have been huge ones. So that is massive right there. Brett Kulak crashing the crease. I don't know if you actually caught that on the live play, but Brett Kulak cr crashed through the crease. Second career playoff goal Four clean cost and 7.45 to go as the Kings fire the shot right back into Stuart Skinner. But the Oilers once again are ahead in this hockey game. And that is a big, big, big time. Big, big, big time change in all of this. So, all right. That's where we're at right now. So, friends, welcome aboard if you're just tuning in. But that's a big time goal for clean cost and that's for sure. And I just wanted to catch uh, Sean. Welcome in as you're tuning in from Newfoundland. Just past midnight now out there in Newfoundland as Canada begins the new day 
already out there on the East Coast. So here we go. As the Kings get it off the face off, Mikey Anderson drifts one off the skates of Zach Hyman. And this one will come back to the near side boards. As that's a good play there from Kopitar. Just to get it deep. Arvidsson back to the, the near side boards again. Trying to get it around the zone a little differently. That's going to be Nugent Hawkins playing it there. Battled up the boards. And the Oilers still trying to fight this one free. As Kempe is battling there. Trying to do anything he can. Hyman doing anything he can to get it out. And how about this? Nugent Hopkins is going to pick this one up behind the net. And this is going to be now backhanded out by the Oilers. Off a body down the length of the ice. Icing call. Okay, sure enough. I'll be fine with that. As I think I'm going to have to be is the problem for the Oilers right there. Is that icing call? I thought it hit a body, but what do you do? It'll go down the length of the ice for that icing call. There's Will Ferrell. Calculating things out. Doing his thing. I love that Will Ferrell has just very much so embraced the gray beard. Looks absolutely fantastic to see him doing that. He's... It's cheering there. I don't know who that is with him, but I'm sure we'll get some kind of confirmation tonight. Pete, welcome in. And uh, all right. Caden, welcome in. As this one's going to come back to the blue line now. Shot fired by Gavrikov. Fought off by Stuart Skinner. Up and out of play. And that is going to be another big time save for Stuart Skinner, who's got that save percentage once again above the 900 mark to start this game as this is going to be a shot save made by Skinner late reaction but made it that's for sure so hopefully he uh, doesn't have too many more late reactions the rest of the way home and I had to be really careful how I celebrated that goal earlier I had the cat in my lap still and I just about yard sailed him down so 650 to go face off again Stuart Skinner early reaction that time making the glove hand save and we will have a quick stoppage in play there um, Benny, you're, uh, you're already saying that the Oilers should take this one home. I'm hoping they do. I really do hope the Oilers take this one home. And I mean, that's not to discredit what the Kings have done this series. The Kings have done absolute fantastic stuff this series. And I have a lot of respect, right? I think the Kings gave us the most memorable playoff series last season, right? The Calgary Flames one was big, but I think the LA Kings one was a real coming out party for the Oilers in a sense. That one tipped to the front of the net. Big time save there from Skinner. Comes off the boards and now Deneau sees this one fired out in the middle of the ice as this will be played back down to Aya Fallo by Gavrikov. Comes across. Cameraman's lost sight of the puck. Don't mind me. 6.22 to go here as that's going to be picked up by Moore behind the net. Oh, Ekholm just runs more and just separates him from the puck. And then Bouchard able to pick it up, fire it off the skates of McDavid. And then cut the puck off at center ice and flip it back. Hand over to Kane. Cutting it off is Gavrikov with the speed back the other way. Gavrikov fires the shot off of, off of Stuart Skinner, but the save is made. I couldn't figure out what that big beep was. That was my laundry finishing. As Evander Kane will come back the other way and get going. 5.50 to go here in this first period of play. Back and battled off the boards there as the Oilers continue to play this puck. And now Ryan McLeod battles the puck free. He's going to cut wide and into the front of the net. Oh, just missed it. Still battling that puck. Here's Vinny DeArnay down low to McLeod. Or sorry, Fogel one more time. Short side shot. Doesn't go. Backhand rebound off of Corpus Salo. And the save is made. That was some great fourth line attacking right there for the Edmonton Oilers. But it is our hero so far tonight. Clean cost and scoring the big goal. Yeah, does Connor McDavid have a goal? Sure. But when you have a choice between who scored a bigger goal, was it Clean? Was it Connor? I think it's Clean cost and at this point because it is that next goal that we always talk about. All right. Here we go. Jamie, welcome into the stream. Thank you so much for being along for the ride tonight. And that one guy as well. Um, welcome in as well. As we are crushing along here tonight. As I just want to say again, friends, we're on commercial break. If you haven't left a like yet on the stream, please do. I know we're getting up to 100 likes as soon as we did. Must have helped out the numbers for sure from everything I understand of YouTube. And secondary too, friends. If you're new to the channel, I, Kings fan, Oilers fan, there's plenty yet to go in this series based on two things. If it goes game seven, I want you here. So definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. But should the Oilers advance, right? Obviously, that'll be the only way I keep live streaming.
But should the Oilers advance, we go on to play the Vegas Golden Knights. I want you to hit the subscribe button here on Dolany TV because as a Kings fan, you can hate watch that series twice over, hate watch the King or Golden Knights, and hate watch the Oilers at the same time. Hope that both teams lose along here on Dolany TV. And as an Oilers fan, well, would I not love to have you aboard for this whole Oilers thing we've got going here on the channel? Absolutely, I would. So that's where we're sitting. Clean cost and two goals on six shots in this series so far. Now up to 12,101 subscribers. So we're already up to 21 gained on the night. So again, thank you to everybody that's already hit that button tonight. And clean cost and yeah, his post game after game two is probably one of the most special post games you're going to get out of a guy that really doesn't speak a lot of English, but he was very proud of uh, being an Edmonton Oiler in front of these crazy fans at Rogers Place in game number two. So here we go. Face off down. This one's going to be one back for Darnell Nurse. Played down to Drew Doughty. 5.25 to go here in this first period to play 2-1 for the Oilers over top of the LA Kings. Getting going, Jack Walkman. And uh, Sajit welcome in as well as we've got Connor McDavid coming back the other way. He's going to rip across Dipsy Doodle and try to get in behind the net. Oh, he's still got it. Darnell Nurse back door. Denied on the one-timer. I didn't know where Connor was going with that one. I was kind of just watching him stand around and dance with the puck. And Darnell Nurse just about snuck down and put it back door. But it was that close to going in. And this one's now going to go up ahead. Darnell Nurse turns and burns it back the other way for the time being. Fiala is now with the puck back to the blue line. 4.46 to go. It hops a stick at that said blue line. And now with 2-1 the score, we are inside the last five minutes play here in the first period. We almost have one period down. This one's coming back the other way for Byfield. Shot fired up over top of everybody into the near side corner. Dayarnay eats a healthy whack off the legs. And this one will come back now. Freed into the middle of the ice. Puck is chopped there by Zach Hyman. Nick Bugstad's free in front. Couldn't get to it. Now Hyman still with the puck in the near side corner in the Kings zone. 4.15 to go here in this first period. Kings battle it back to the Oilers zone. Everybody's going to go for wholesale line changes here. Back into the zone as Matthias Ekholm will dance with this puck. Kings are just comfortable doing the neutral zone trap for the time being. This one's going to go now. Bouchard over and shot fired down low into the Oilers' offensive zone. Now down low to Matt Roy. Roy's going to play this puck, and this one continues to battle around. Roy's going to go off the boards over to the far side. Kings out into the Oilers' zone. Battled there by Matthias Ekholm. Nice play by Moore to carry it on to the near side boards. And now Drysdale takes a healthy jolt. And this one with 3.30 to go as Matt Roy will get it in his own zone. Pick it up there and now picked up by Drysdale over to Bouchard. Bouchard at his own blue line dancing with this puck. We've just got a little disconnection here. As that's just kind of par for the course on these big live streams is usually things will happen once in a while in the back end and that's fine and dandy. All right, here we go. This one's back to the... Oh, man, that was a big block by Drew Doughty and an even better pass by Connor McDavid right off the skate, play, skate blade by Drew Doughty. 3.04 to go here in this first period of play as we will have Lazat come in to take the face off for the Kupari. This one continues to battle and now freed up by Warren Fogel. Fogel goes in on the attack. He's going to get across the shot fired. Goes wide of Corpus Allo, So it comes back to the blue line at the Oilers line. Broberg backhands it back in the middle of the ice. And picked up now by Fogel once again. Fogel's going to battle this one free. 2.44 to go here in this first period of play. And um, now trying to battle as Drew Doughty gets in behind the net. 2.35 to go here in this first period of play. Puck's fired up the ice. And now the Arvidsson's going to carry it across the Oilers line. Stripped there and right onto the tape of Kempe. It went 2.25 to go in this first period. As this one will be Kopitar freeing it up there. Kempe going in behind. Nurse battling Kempe as that one will go over to Ryan McLeod. McLeod will free it up for Derek Ryan. Across to Cody Cece. Cece battles it across the Oilers. Blue. Offensive blue line. Nothing happening there. 2.07 remains here in this first period as the game starts to slow down ever so much. Just in this game six, every moment, every movement so critical. That shot on Stuart Skinner, a save made. 
and we will have a stoppage and play just like that. I'll be right, right back. Right, let's just go open the door down here. We should be ready to rock and roll. My apologies, just had the cat scratching at the door there to get out, so just had to make sure I let her out. And now this one, we're just watching that replay right quick, so that's where we're at right now, so. All right, 157 to go here in this first period of play. 2-1 for the Edmonton Oilers is the score. That's a big one for us. And now we will see what uh, Darnell Nurse thinks here alongside Jay Woodcroft. As we're going to see a 2 1 final as Toronto wins the series. 5 2 for New York over top of New Jersey. So they force game seven. And this one's going to battle off the boards. And back to the high point. This one continuing the battle and now back into the near side boards. Here comes Zach Hyman across the Kings blue line. He carries down deep. Hyman goes back, battling there. Buck 34 to go here in the first period as the Kings rim around their own zone into the open ice and up the gut as Fiala will pick this puck up across. Is that's a nice dance there by Velarde? Oh, just misses that one there. And now another shot from Gavrikov goes down low. Can't hit the net either. Minute 16 to go here in this first period of play. And the Kings will continue to battle here as they're looking to make a play out of their own zone. 105 to go here in this first period of play. This one slowed down a little bit here towards the end of this first period just because both teams kind of clamping down. The Kings somehow have 16 shots this period. Don't forget that. The Oilers with 11. Two goals on 11 shots. Now 17 shots. For the LA Kings, but if that's their quality of shot, even the goal that went in was a quality of shot like that. It's nothing meaningful, a shot off the pad into the corner kind of deal. This one now with 40 seconds to go as Dano will battle this one free in the neutral zone over to Ayafalo. He'll dip and duck and dodge through the neutral zone. Shot towards the net by Dano, freed up there, and now Leon Drysdale will play this puck free off the boards. Down into the Kings zone, no icing call there as the Kings player, Anderson, definitely could have played that puck. 17 seconds to go in this first period of play, and that will pretty much do it here. As the Kings get to the attack, Arvidsson drags it to the front of the net. The Oilers had just too many bodies there to get through. Bouchard back the other way, he'll chip into the LA Kings zone, and that will do it here for this first period of play. Friends, welcome aboard if you're just tuning in. It's been a pretty solid start to this hockey game so far between the Oilers and um, LA Kings. But as we get going here, um, Delora welcome in, Devin and Summer welcome in, and uh, everybody else who's tuned in here so far tonight, welcome in. Really do appreciate you. Milagros, uh, welcome in as well. Uh, as we are just about set for this intermission to get underway, they're going to show the replays and stuff, but I am going to quickly head upstairs and take a quick break so i'm going to get once again if you're new to the channel tell you to hit that subscribe button here on doll any tv definitely if you can while i'm gone upstairs and other than that i'm going to leave you on the scoreboard we'll recap all this craziness in a matter of moments friends i need more water for the time being i'll be right right back
All right, my apologies, friends. Just crushing along here is just upstairs. Obviously, all the roommates are back, so everybody asking me how things are going, but obviously things are going pretty well for us Edmonton Oilers fans. Up to one after one period of play. I was looking at the three number on my screen. Brain is kind of Captain Squirrely over there, so sometimes things get distractified in my brain, but uh, obviously I was able to save it at the last second there. 3.2... How about that, friends? We are up to 376 hours watched on the stream so far tonight. So that is absolutely huge as we continue to crush along tonight on the live stream, that is for sure. Let me quickly open this up and see how Patrick's stream is doing as he's got some folks along for the ride over there as well as we'll go over and just quickly tune in there. As um, All right, decent period, decent period. As we can say that much for sure, it was a decent period for the Edmonton Oilers. So, all right, we are just about ready to recap this. Let me uh, unscrew the cork off of the old BioSteel cap, not cork. I don't know why I said cork. I don't know. It's been a long day. Long day. That's all I'm blaming on it. All right, for the LA Kings, 17 shots to the Oilers, 11 after one period of play. The Kings out hit us 15 to 9. The face-offs dead even more or less. The Oilers won one more out of 21 than the Kings did. 11-10 there. Penalties, as somebody was mentioning earlier in the chat, absolutely zero between the Oilers and Kings on the board after one period of play. So either things are going to be let go tonight or the penalties are coming hot and heavy in that second period and we'll find out. Giveaways 2-1 for the Oilers. Takeaways 5-2 for the Kings. Block shots again dead even separated by 1-7-6 for the LA Kings. The bigger scoring summary so far is Connor McDavid with his third goal of the season, or series. I knew I was gonna make that mistake at some point. Evan Bouchard picks up assist seven and Matthias Ekholm picks up assist number four. And then you look at this here too, Sean Dursey picks up his first goal of the series from Kevin Fiala and Quinton Byfield and then Clean Cost in his second of the series from Ryan McLeod, and Vinny DeHarnay picks up his first career playoff point. So he's had a tough series, but Vinny DeHarnay gets it going with a big-time um, big time uh, first assist of his playoff career. So that's where we're at. And, Alan, what is BioSteel? For those of you friends who are unfamiliar with BioSteel, it's, uh, I believe, Mike Camilleri is involved, if I'm not mistaken. Former Edmonton Oiler, Mike Camilleri. Is involved. It's a sports drink that is made with uh, stevia instead of sugar, and it pretty much is like really fantastic. It's like a water substitute, but also like a Gatorade substitute at the same time. So I don't mind that at all. All right, Ski Welcome in. And what do we got going here? Um, Brock tuning in from. Rincon de, oh man, I I'm, I was going to try, but I gave up halfway through, and that's embarrassing. But uh, let's see what else we got. Everybody going in. Camille, welcome in. And um, let's see, I don't think I've missed anyone else. Medusa, welcome in as well. And I think as well I missed no Farm Girl coming back into the chat here just briefly. I know I'm moderating du duties. And uh, Eric, Eric, big, bold, bad. Uh, comment right there. I just caught it just scrolling back up about Clint Costin's goal would not be something So let's get it going friends. How about this? I really don't have a big intermission plan for you tonight So let's go out here. I've got 463 of you aboard. So I think we can play this game on time tonight uh, If you want to let me know where in the world you're tuning in from I know we've already had a couple of comments here But where in the world are you tuning in from tonight? That would be fantastic to hear as we'll just try and get everybody some shout outs out tonight so that's where we're at so let's find out where we're at and Camille you're not wrong about the powder being disgusting I've seen some nightmarish pictures of people opening up the powder and it just being absolutely terrible so Sajit tuning in from Toronto Ruby tuning in from Montreal Dana from Edmonton right now and uh, that's uh, that's even Flames fans tuning in tonight unreal so we like that as we'll get going here. Scott tuning in from Franklin, Tennessee. We've got Mackinac City, Michigan, I believe that is. I'm hoping. Southern California. Hey, hey, that's all good, Tanya. Do appreciate you being along for the ride again. 
as everybody's getting going here tonight. Dakota, welcome in as well, getting the Let's Go Oilers going here. We've got Toronto on the board again. And Bert, I'm hoping I'm going to get this one right. Again, friends, I'm going to try and make sure I mention name and stuff too, but uh, just when I get tripped up, uh, Kugluktuk, I think is how it is pronounced. I might be missing something there, but I'm hoping uh, I've got that right for you, Bert. It's, that's from Nunavut, north of Yellowknife. John tuning in from South Australia today. Um, Linnea tuning in from Onion Lake Cree Nation. Of course, uh, close to my home town of Cold Lake back when I used to live up there. We've got Pittsburgh on the map. We've got Saskatchewan on the map twice over. We've got uh, Daniel tuning in from Kazlorda, Kazakhstan. Now Daniel, big story there. He is local to the Edmonton area. He's just over there in Kazakhstan for the time being. Um, we've got Niagara on the lake. Scotty, <laughs> love it. Um, Brandon tuning in from Delta, BC. So we've got Alberta, BC, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario. We've got obviously as well Newfoundland on the board. Tuning in Medicine Hat on the board. Um, we've got Bronx, New York, which uh, Irfan, uh, you're a diehard Leafs fan from Bronx, New York. That is, uh, that is kind of confusing, concerning. I'm not sure which way to put that. Uh, Nick, we've got you from Kingston. Yellowknife as well, Northwest Territories. Um, we've got Spruce Grove, so just right outside of uh, town there. We've got Fraser Valley, BC tonight. As I, if I don't, if I don't just say where everyone's tuning in from, I can't catch it up as fast. Or, no, Darcy was able to throw it into the comment as well from Brandon, Manitoba. Um, we've got Edmonton as well. We've got Vancouver Island. We've got Regina again on the board there one more time. We've got Seattle. Washington, of course, Seattle playing game seven against the Colorado Avalanche tomorrow. And there we go, Carly coming in with Quebec. So we are just missing Nova Scotia and uh, New Brunswick at this point. And oh, don't mind me as well, we need Yukon, but we know who we've got for that. Don't you worry, he'll be along in a matter of time. We've got Philadelphia on the board as well. And we should be ready to roll here as I think we've got everybody rolling along for the ride now as... Um, I think we've got it pretty much all done to go as we are ready to rock into this uh, second period. And Jason, there we go. Uh, Ken Scratch, New Brunswick off the board here as Jason just gets in the comment just quickly right there. So I do appreciate that. So we're just missing a couple more provinces and a couple more territories and we should be good to go. And what do we got? We've got West Kelowna as well. Tammy tuning in from West Kelowna. And uh, we are good to go as Lowell's tuning in from Slave Lake as well. So we've got everybody aboard. And this is the best part, right? We've got every single inch and corner of Alberta covered, I am sure, of it at some point in this live stream. As to well, everybody tuning in from across the country and around the world tonight. So really do appreciate everybody being along for the ride. That is my favorite game to play on the stream. Just especially when we get these big streams going just to see where everybody's tuning in from all across the world, right? We've got Mexico in here as well, but it's just kind of fun to see how this all comes together. Let's let me just again take a quick look at what we've kind of come up to here on the live stream so far as we're going to go right there and divide that out one more time. We're already up over 400 and um, 431 hours on the stream. So that's where we're at. And Carly, I can... Uh, I can appreciate that comment right there. The Oilers are better than the Habs. I do like that. Speaking my language right there. And William, listen, uh, you're in Toronto and they're going crazy here. Now you just need the Oilers to cap it off with a big win. Well, that's, you want to talk about it. And friends, for those of you that weren't in the live stream for the pregame, you would have missed this little spiel from me. Uh, just saying it's been a really, really tough week at work this past week and I know that we've got a very tough week lined up at work as well coming up so um, just what I was spilling on about is just simply I've got a couple of Oilers fans at work I've got a couple of Leafs fans at work and for all those of us we just need some kind of moral victory that just ain't work and that for sure is um, something like maybe the Leafs winning like they have and the Oilers winning like they're about to hopefully so um, that's that's what we're just trying to take into Monday. Both our teams advancing on to round two 
and maybe hopefully one day down soon facing each other in the cup final. That would be something, wouldn't it? That's all right. We should be ready to rock and roll here. As uh, Michael, you're a diehard Kings fan in Seattle, so I mentioned that the Kraken are not your team. That is, that is fair enough. That's for sure. That's all right. We are just about ready to get things underway here in this second intermission, friends, or second period, second intermission. If we're already there, light me up. We're only a period away, but we're not. So, um, <laughs> uh, yes. William, I can imagine that it is an all-out. Um, all out yard sale right now in Toronto to be celebrating that's for sure so hopefully all comes together and uh Billy uh I sell sheet metal how hard can that be well when you're getting into the uh gist of new home construction season it's a little little harder than uh, unfortunately it normally is is this nice weather means a lot more work than usual right it's it's hard to install houses in minus 40 right guys don't like to be out there touching the tin in minus 40 but Guys don't mind slamming tin into houses in plus 20. So that's where we're at now here in Alberta is it's getting up to the plus 20. So we just got to eat while the getting is good and enjoy it. But uh, while well, it's it's tough because, man, it's, it's, it's a beat down because you're always panicking about back orders. You're always panicking about this. And hopefully we're just done chasing all that. And we go into this week, the Oilers, the Leafs have won, and we can go on and just enjoy a good week of work, that's for sure. Let me go here, and nailed it. That was good form this time. I think that one gets a 10 out of 10 for those of you that uh, played basketball back in the day, I hope. Um, let's see what else we got going here. As uh, We all want to see a flip out of your seat next to our goal. Jamie, we'll see how big of a goal it is because obviously we, we might need a big time goal for that next one should the LA Kings have to tie it up, but that uh, that Zach Hyman reaction, I don't think much is going to top that in overtime the other night, as that was a pretty pretty uh, pretty big one there that uh, one. So um, let me see what we got going here. It looks like Ty Tulio is at the Oilers game, so Ty Tulio probably a part of the next call ups for the Edmonton Oilers. If I'm a betting man right here. As uh, he is at the Oilers Kings game, so that's interesting to note. So keep that in mind. Ty Tulio, Raph Lavoie, all those guys about to be the next call ups for the uh, Edmonton Oilers. And I'll try and set that down a little quieter this time there for you, George. My apologies. As oh, you're talking about that sounded like a brick as I shot the sorry, brick basketball, basketball. We're watching hockey, it's all good. Oh boy, and uh, yeah, we are just about ready for this second period, friends. It's it's been a long ride. This uh, obviously these intermissions seem to get longer as the playoffs go along, but hopefully, um, hopefully we can get to this um, this second period in a matter of time, and then we just go out there and crush off, which should be a really fun second period. Hopefully for our Edmonton Oilers and the L.A. Kings. As we are just about done this series, hopefully. Game six, like I said, drop the puck. Tell me it's over with the final buzzer. Oilers win. That's all that I care tonight. But we got to get there somehow. And that's where we're at. Merv, welcome in. As yes, the Blue Jays, too, also winning a big time series tonight. Or did they win the series or did they just walk off the Mariners? I think they just walked them off. Uh, won nothing. A big time pitching effort there from the Blue Jays, who in 10 innings did not surrender a run that is going to help some pitchers eras that's for sure as um or on your chair knicks yanks and leafs well i can cheer for the knicks i do i do actually cheer for the knicks i think they are my second team following the raptors to be honest with you and nicholas a leafs oilers final would be a great thing it absolutely would be and uh, where's the game played right now? It's being played down there at Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles. So that is tough right there. And Ski's going for uh, the Oilers Rangers final. That seems to be a popular answer tonight as well. So hopefully it gets going. And uh, we'll see what ends up coming from that there. So um, 
yeah, that's where we're at right now, friends. Like, like I said, these commercial breaks are just killing me tonight. Seems like we've been on a commercial break all night for some reason, and uh, normally, um, normally I'm able to talk my way through it. But that's the uh, that's the anxiousness talking tonight. Is I just want this game to get up and underway and done with, and then go to bed. Well, actually, I'm gonna hang out with the uh, roommates a little bit tonight. It is Saturday night, and if they choose to go down to the local bar, we might have a a little bit of a situation on our hands if the Edmonton Oilers do indeed pull off this victory. So they're going to flash back to the uh, Game 3 showing off the Will Ferrell face paint and then all the Oilers fans coming out with the Will Ferrell face paint. This guy in particular, that guy. There was quite a few in the stands there with the Will Ferrell face paint. It was actually quite funny to see them all doing that in support of the Oilers just kind of getting back at the LA Kings and here's Will Ferrell once again getting to it. So we'll see what ends up coming from this one tonight. But um, that's where we're at. As, all right, let's get this going, friends. We are ready to rock and roll as Connor McDavid to center ice. We are ready to drop the puck here in this second period of play. That, that Oilers jersey. Oh, 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 the royal blue. She looks so good. All right, friends, let's do this. Philip Deneau, Connor McDavid down at center ice. They're ready to take the face off. Dano wins it back. Gavrikov will get it going back the other way. Ace, welcome into the chat. Just saw you there. As I think I had seen you earlier and didn't give you that shout out. So we'll get you going as this one comes back now into the zone for the LA Kings. Dano battles there and frees it along the boards as he will turn back to the point. Knocked to a knee. The Oilers are able to free it up and now coming away with it is Dry Settle. Dry Settle looking for a pass. Lane opens up. He'll try and backtrack it to Ekholm who gets it down deep. Now shot fired. Save made. By Corpusalo, and then Kane gets absolutely leveled by a cross check from a Kings player, and Kane does not overreact to it as he goes down, and he's just more worried that he's still got all his chicklets. But 19:31 to go here in this second period, and that was a big time chance for the Oilers right off the hop in the first 29 seconds of this one, as this one's just. Kind of takes a funny bounce over top of Matt Roy's stick. And then, ooh, actually it wasn't a cross check. It was a high stick up in the uh, yeah, up in the space of the cane that just kind of gets him up high. And no penalty on the play, so we'll carry on. I'm not too worried about that. Hey, you know what? We've missed some calls over the course of the series. The others, as long as they keep leading, I will be fine with that. As this one's going to come back down low into the Oilers zone. Picked up there by Darnell Nurse, but... We'll have a whistle and a stoppage in play just like that once again. So just is where it is. And that is a glorious chance there for Evander Kane. Double poke on Corpusalo, And then Kane takes the whack upstairs. And then the cross check in the ribs from Matt Roy. So that's where we're at. There was a couple of double whammies there for Evander Kane on that play. 19-18 to go here in this second period of play, my friends. Nick Bugstad will take the face off for the Oilers. He will try and draw this one back. Zach Hyman scrambling to get it back to Nugent Hopkins. Can't do it. Comes up off the boards in front of the bench. And looks like we will have a stoppage in play here with a uh, penalty call against Zach Hyman. Looks like this will be uh, the call. As Hyman might have taken an elbowing call by the looks of it. I'm not too sure. This will be Hyman coming up and, ooh, okay, never mind, never mind. Hyman kind of gets greasy with it. A little bit of an elbow. A little bit of an elbow to the back of the head of Doughty. I get why they called it, right? That's one of those ones you have to call. So we're to the penalty kill now. 19-11 to go here in the second period of play. Elbowing call. Not very often you see elbowing calls anymore nowadays, but that is for sure uh Tough break for the Oilers one way and then a tough break for the Oilers the other way. The LA Kings power play though, 5 for 18 in this series. Darnell Nurse lifts one in on Corpus Salo who plays it off. He had to quickly scramble to figure that one out over to Drew Doughty. Now we got a 15 seconds knocked off this power play for the Kings right now as Fiala will carry across the blue line. Over to Arvidsson, back to the blue line. Here's rallying up Kempe. Kempe gets it down low to Arvidsson again. Now to the high point, the shot coming in down low from Kempe, not loaded. This kicks off of his stick, and I'm not sure what that guy is pointing at, but I'm, whatever, I guess he was just getting out of his seat, excited for nothing. So this one comes back up high, Doughty across to Kopitar. 
Kopitar walks down the wing, now back to Doughty. Doughty loads over to Kempe. Kempe with a minute 12 to go here in this first period of play. Save made in front. And now this one's going to keep battling there as Iafalo is not on the ice. That's Fiala getting it back to Mr. Victor Arvidsson who goes off the boards to Drew Doughty. They're moving the puck around too much. Shoot the puck, guys. Come on, give me some action. There's Fiala. Big time, one time save there for Stuart Skinner. That's about as big of a save as you can possibly get. 17.58 to go. Fiala across the blue line. He's going to battle here. Nice play by Ekholm to get it out back to the blue line. Doughty backhands it down low. And now Ekholm's still battling as Dayarnay will fire it around the boards. Hops right in front. The rebound, the shot, the save from Stuart Skinner. And now coming back the other way, it's Evander Kane. He ate that high stick just a moment ago. And it looks like there's a penalty up coming against the LA Kings. And we will have a penalty call, a tripping call against the Kings. Four on four for the next 22 seconds, my friends. As that is a big time penalty call there against the LA Kings to even this one back up. As in, that is a huge save from Stuart Skinner kicking out the pad. That's a big time stop. And then Fiala with the big time shot there and then this one oh big time trip there from i have follow as well on mcdavid who right like we said the la kings are going to be targeting mcdavid because of that leaked video from practice so right there there's another instance of it is here's dry taking the face off now against kupari dry will win this one to the boards the kings win it back and this one will come across now as this one will be played back up into the middle of the ice. Nice play there by Kapari to try and get it deep, but an even better play by Bouchard to get it free. And here's McDavid harassing the defenseman there. Oh, sorry, that's Lazotte trying to get this one going. And now Lazotte down low. Stuart Skinner kicks that one away. Bouchard will battle this one back into possession with a buck 37 to go in the Oilers' power play as Bouchard will lead ahead. He's going to drift across the blue line. The Oilers power play 8 for 14 this series. That is absolutely unreal this series for the Oilers power play. And here's coming back the other way. A bad play by the Oilers. The shot kicked away by Stuart Skinner. A big time save. Sorry if that clap was loud. But that's about as big of a save as you need on the penalty kill. And this one's going to be back into the possession for the LA Kings. As the Oilers yet to truly set up the power play as of yet. As this one will come around in the near side. McDavid now picking up steam. He'll get through the neutral zone. He'll dance and can be cut off there by the three-man wide attack of the LA Kings defensively as this comes back now to Stuart Skinner with 48 seconds to go in the power play. Picking it up now is Bouchard. Bouchard across to Leon Dreisel, dropping it back to Connor McDavid. McDavid across the blue line over to Nugent Hopkins. Now far side to Leon Dreisel, walking down the wing. Dreisel is going to drift the puck down to McDavid. McDavid wheels and deals back to Drysdale. Drysdale wheels off the back. And here's now Bouchard across to McDavid. Setting up the one-timer scores. Let's go. Leon Drysdale puts it home on the power play. And that'll make it 3-1 for the Edmonton Oilers. As you knew, they were going to queue up that one-timer at least once on this power play. And the Edmonton Oilers get it going with 15.54 to go in this second period. The Oilers just kept that puck alive. In possession just long enough as that was a good wheel and deal as that is a big time get for the Oilers. Coming across was Connor McDavid over the boards and they just kept rolling around the zone till they found the lane they were looking for. Bouchard over to McDavid. Bang! Right there. Leon Dreisaitl top shelf to put it home. And oh yeah, by the way, Evan Bouchard scored another goal. 25 career playoff goals now for Leon Dreisaitl. The man is going to get it going. And this one now picks it up back the other way. Dursey's going to get it going. And now Velarde will play this one ahead. He'll fire it down low. Seventh of the playoffs for Leon Dreisaitl. McDavid's seventh assist and Bouchard's eighth. And here comes Brett Kulak wiring a shot. The save made by Corpusalo. Squeaked through him. Ref didn't blow it dead and it played on as Derek Ryan's got it battling around in the corner there against Kevin Fiala. Can't free it up. Kulak, the tip from Derek Ryan. Can't solve Corpusalo. Hit and Broberg's going to play this one at the blue line. Offside, McLeod gets run out by a Kings player and this one 
is going to get edged up a little bit more now here against the Kings and Oilers in this second period as there's our first big scrum. Not really a scrum, it's more a meeting of the minds between the Kings and the Oilers here, but 3-1 the score between LA and Edmonton after that power play goal for Leon Drysaddle. As that one gets going, Drysaddle shoots that puck home, and what a goal there from Drysaddle. He was pretty happy for that one. And yeah, you know what? Rogers plays pretty happy for that one as well. All right, friends, 1458 to go in the second period. I see we've just crossed over 605 of you watching back home. Thank you so much for being along for the ride. There's Drysdale munching on some uh, electrolytes on the bench. Now Bugstad's going to win this one back. CC rims it into the zone. Corpusallo knocks it down with the stick as this one gets going. And I. Uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, sir. I love it. I, you know exactly what comment I'm responding to in there. As this one's coming back the other way, the Kings fire the puck. Save made by Skinner, and he keeps the Kings player out of the net. As what is going on, my man? C Tang in the chat right there. I love to see it. As I, I have a feeling we're going to see some other folks come out of the woodwork tonight as well into the chat. It's tonight's going to be a real fun hockey game. That is for sure. It's good to hear from you, buddy. Very good to hear from you, actually. And uh, finally, a Canadian team that can bring the Stanley Cup home where it belongs. Well, hopefully now we've got the Leafs on to round two. We've got the Oilers on to round two. It would be nice to see both teams uh, do it. Obviously, the Oilers not quite on to round two, but I'm assuming. And uh, I know what assuming does, but I'll, I'll place the bet on that. Just publicly saying it as many times because I have the Oilers winning the Cup. So, yeah, they have to advance to round two. Penalty against the Oilers, though. Two-minute power play for the LA Kings. A holding call for Mr. Um, Mr. Nick Bugstad, unfortunately, as Derek Ryan will take the face off right off the hop. He'll get it back to the blue line on the push back. And now Kempe is going to load up the chance here. As this one's going to go back to Kempe near side boards. Kempe back now to Doughty. Doughty's playing this one down low to Kempe again. Kempe around that face-off dot area. He's looking to try and walk a shot in the zone, but can't do it as this one's now going to be Fiala down low. Now Kempe loads up the shot. Can't get it on net cleanly, and this one goes back into LA Kings possession. 14-10 to go here in this second period of play. Batted back to the blue line, and now Doughty keeps it in yet again. Now the shot loading up from Fiala. Save made by Skinner, and this one's going to go back out of the zone, down low in the Kings end. As Doughty will reload this puck. A minute 16 to go here in this power play. Puck played across. Mr. Ryan McLeod drops his stick. That allows a four on three back the other way. McLeod quickly back into the play. Kings dump it back to the blue lines. And this one will go back down low for the Kings to roll this one around behind the net. As this will be back to the far side boards. Kings looking for an option as they just keep trying to play this puck to the middle. And the Oilers sealing them out of there. Fiala over to Kempe. Kempe wires the shot. Oh, no. Oh, no. That was about as Mike Smith-esque of a goal as Stuart Skinner has let in in these playoffs. Wow. That is tough. I mean, hey, you know what? Big break for the Kings to score the 3-2 goal on the power play. Respond against ours. But that is about as... I mean, re-watch that one. That's really all I want you to do. Um, Rewatch that. Is that was tough to watch from the Oilers. Stuart Skinner is this one. Yeah, they fall asleep, but Skinner just falls apart right there. And uh, Mike Smith is really the only thing that invokes any kind of memories right there. As that one just goes right up top. As Gamer Saloon or Gamer Sniffles, I was missing PEI. I never even mentioned PEI in our uh, shoutouts tonight. And now let's keep this rocking and rolling. As, yeah, we need an insurance goal here, Peter. Again, we had one. Now we need another one. As this one is going to go back to the near side boards in the Kings zone where Matthias Ekholm plays it down low. Evander Kane just doesn't activate. Kempe having a great series as well. Kempe has been fantastic so far for the Kings. Fiala with his sixth assist. I think he missed what game one as well. So he's been on a heater as well. 12.50 to go here in this one as the Oilers will play this puck down low. And then Ekholm spins off a check and eats an elbow up into the teeth of Deneau. So that will draw a crowd and a penalty against the Oilers. As I'm just hoping out of this whole situation here, 
The LA Kings end up taking a penalty on the play, and then it evens up four on four as Deneau and Kane are tangled up. And this has been a tough period to watch so far, and friends, just give me a second. I gotta go kill something. I don't know what that is, but it's on my wall, and I don't want it on my wall anymore. Because whatever it is must die. Or it's established in my basement. Oh, dropped it on the floor. Yep, that's that's typical. I don't know if I ever told you guys, but there was once a uh, spider that crawled out of the ductwork down here, and um, I pretty much watched it just crawl into a box and disappear for the rest of my life. So I don't know whatever happened to that spider. It looks like we are on commercial break by the looks of it. So friends, um, just to say, if you're new to the channel right now, I should appeal to you right now. If you would be so kind to consider hitting that subscribe button here on Dolan TV, that would be greatly appreciated. We came into the night at 12,080 subscribers on the uh, channel. And so far tonight, we are crushing along up to 12,111. So we've had a pretty good night, but I would love to have you hit that subscribe button for sure. Because Game 7 is going to be good if you're a Kings fan. Or beating the Vegas Golden Knights is going to be really good as an Edmonton Oilers fan. I will promise you that. But now the question is... Um, uh, I gotta tell you, um, we gotta we gotta just get the job done here in Game Six. That's I guess the first part of it. As let me see, <laughs> um, what do we got? Um, yeah, Jack. Yeah, he only played 13 games last year. I think he only got 12 starts, if I'm mistaken, right there. And uh, Skinner is eligible for the Calder, but probably won't win it because he's still in a I think a finalist, yes. I think Sturt Skinner is a finalist for the uh, Calder this year, but winning it, that's kind of been our biggest debate all season long. Um, <laughs> Imaj, uh, you're saying you became an Oilers fan to just go up against... Um, Go up against all your Kings fans who suddenly became uh, bandwagoners. I like it. And so it's not an elbow against Ekholm. I thought it was an elbow that caught Dinoa Pai. It's actually a high stick. That's my apologies, Jack. I saw your comment there. But yeah, Ekholm can't believe it right there following through on that puck. And then uh, Kane and Dinoa get nasty behind the net. But it will be a face-off outside of the Oilers' zone because of the Kings getting into it, I guess, is what they ruled there. So... This is going to be back to Drew Doughty. Buck 57 to go here on the power play as Doughty's going to wheel across center and now dump it back to Adrian Kempe, who's been wheeling and dealing this series all day long. As you know what, Drysdale has had a great series, but so has Kempe. I will never not sing the praises of Kempe. He's had some absolutely unreal goals this series. And uh, hopefully I wish him the best moving forward with the LA Kings. Really do like him. I love playing the video games with him. Like, obviously, I've played the NHL series of video games for years. And I always, somehow, some way, every single year for at least a little bit, choose to run a franchise mode with the LA Kings because Kempe is uh, really fun. And I think, too, the LA Kings are kind of an interesting team, just how they're set up. As, um, yeah, there we go. All right, here we go. This one is going to be Kempe coming back the other way. 12.09 to go here in the second period. This one's going to be picked up now by Fiala. Fiala is going to walk around and play it off to Doughty. Doughty's going to go across with 12 minutes remaining here in the second period. All right, game on. Buck 13 to go here in this power play for the Kings. Back to the high point now, Doughty. It's going to go across to Fiala again. Load it up one more time. This is going to come over. Scores. Kevin Fiala puts it home. Oh, boy. Here we go. Now we need it. Now we need it. As they're going to show immediately Will Ferrell. That seems to be Sportsnet's thing. Right off of every LA Kings goal. Show Will Ferrell. And we are back to 3-3. Okay, here's the thing. We're not down 3-0 after the first period. I don't have to pray on the heart strings that we can get this done. It's just now we got to get this next goal. Obviously, that was a beauty of a shot there from Fiala. Head faked me even. I kind of dropped what I was doing, but we'll be just fine. As Fiala walks around the block of Bugstad, 
and then goes far side on Stuart Skinner and puts it home. And now Fiala scores the goal, and the Oilers will continue on with Skinner in net. That is, the, we saw it last time out, you give up three, you're done for the game. So I wonder if Jack Campbell factors into this game. If there's a fourth goal scored, is this one's going to come back to Bouchard in his own zone. He's going to skate there against, I believe, Trevor Moore. And now battling there is Matias Ekholm as these Oilers and Kings continue to try and battle. As now Bouchard will come across to Drysdale. Drysdale over and across the blue line against the Kings. It'll come back into the neutral zone for a brief moment. And this one will come back the other way. Shot fired past Skinner on the far side. Now off the boards by the Oilers and back to the blue line as McDavid tries to carry across. Roy can't get it going and now coming back is... Roy getting into his own zone, playing it off the boards to Kapari, who picks this one up. 10.46 to go. The Oilers want to give us drama? Give me drama. I'm good with it. Like I said, if, friends, if you know anything right now, we just crossed 10,000 views on the live stream, by the way, as well. If you know anything about YouTube, drama is king. So don't mind me if the Oilers want to light us up with a little bit of late game drama to win this hockey game or triple overtime. Don't mind me there either as we will have an offside call against the LA Kings and a stoppage in play. So again, welcome aboard everybody as we are getting things set up for tonight's uh, rest of the hockey game. We're just about into the back half. That's the beauty of a goal there from Fiala as he just gets it through the screen of Kopitar in front who just bled out of the zone or out of the crease there at the last second to make sure he got that screen through. So Beauty of a play there from the Kings to get it going, and that's all that really matters at the end of the day. And let's see here. As um, <laughs> her and the Oilers. All right, so the Oilers are back off and running as the face-off fired in by Darnell Nurse. The Oilers able to force pressure in the zone rather quickly. This one's going to be backhanded ahead, tipped back in. Here comes Warren Fogle. Shot save made by the... LA Kings goaltender Jonas Corposalo, who suddenly doesn't look as bad as he did five minutes ago when the Kings were down 3-1. Here's Cody Cece picking up in his own zone. He's going to backhand around a little spindle against the end boards. Now McLeod turning over a puck. Here's Fiala picking it up. Shot save made by Skinner. Woo! Needed that one. Needed that one like I need oxygen. As this one's going to come back the other way. Picked up again by Walker. Cutting off Fogel at the blue line. And this one's now going to come back. Shot fired towards the net. Can't get it going. 9.36 to go here in this second period of play. And coming back the other way now, Doughty is going to get things going in behind his own blue line. Played ahead. Kopitar comes in on the attack. Kopitar takes out Skinner from behind. And now Clint Costin in the confusion is coming up with the puck. He's going to work it ahead. And now Drew Doughty is going to work this one in behind the net. As Yamamoto's chasing Drysaddle. Is able to get this puck free. This one tips in front. Yamamoto. Clint Costin, baby. Let's go. That's a big time goal. And the Oilers are back on top. 4-3 just like that. 9.06 to go in the second period. And Yamamoto tips that one free for Clint Costin and puts it home to make it a big time game. 4-3. That is about as huge of a goal as you can possibly get. Skinner gets taken out by Kopitar. But again, that play happens because you watch the awareness of Clint Costin knowing what's on the play. He picks it up and keeps it going. Yamamoto with a nice tip on net and then just tips it again. And Clint Costin comes through and fires it home. That was a big time. Look at that. Clint Costin was skating to that puck all, all day. And Clint Costin puts it home to put us up 4-3. 9.06 to go here in the second period. 28-19 the shots for the LA Kings. Richie, welcome back. And uh, Tammy, welcome in as well as I'm just seeing some newer names again in the chat here. Kempe picks it up across the line for the Kings. Battling to the middle of the ice. Here's Kempe. Shot fire save made by Skinner. And that's all that really matters. The Oilers are back up 4-3 after a little bit of drama there to begin that middle part of the second period. But the Oilers and Kings, they're locked in a battle now. And that was a big time goal. Clean Costin again gives us the one goal lead. So that's about as huge as you can get. And it's Clean Costin from Yamamoto and Leon Drysdale from as far as I understand. But we'll see exactly who does get the assist. I'm not sure who got the second assist on that one. But that is a big time 
one right there. So, <laughs> yeah, Alan, I can imagine your um, your animal's probably losing it just as mine. I could hear the roommates trying to figure out um, when I was yelling down here. As I, uh, you guys heard me yell into the corner pretty loud, but I I yelled pretty loud in here. So, hopefully, not keeping anyone up. It is 9:31. So, all right, let's finish this off now. We've got the lead again. Let's not give it up the rest of the way home. Daryl Oilers 4-3, uh, Daryl's happy, I like it, that's for sure. So there we go, appreciate that, and uh, yeah, I'll welcome in as well. And uh, Clem Costin on fire tonight, well he's on fire in the series now, three goals, right? I mean, Peter, you and I both, how many times did we go back and forth early, early, earlier this month is what I'm trying to say, as the season was ending, Man, I just wish Kleem would score a goal. This feels like the game that Kleem's going to score a goal. I'd love to see Kleem score a goal. And it just didn't happen. Just didn't happen. And then all of a sudden when the Oilers needed a goal, they got one from him. Now when they've needed two this game, they've gotten two. So that's fantastic to see for Kleem Costin. But again, friends, if you're new to the channel right now, I should take this commercial break to appeal to you. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button here on the channel. Would really appreciate you doing that. If you're a Kings fan, obviously you want to come back for Game 7 or to both hate watch the Kings and Knights, or Oilers and Knights. Sorry, I keep messing that up. And secondary, if you're an Oilers fan, well, right, if the Oilers win tonight or they go to Game 7, you want to be here either way. So, all right, let's keep this going, my friends. This is um, Lyle Walkman and uh, King, you're, uh, you're anti-Corpus Allo. I know a lot of you have been anti-Corpus Allo tonight for some reason, but I, I get where you're coming from. I mean... A little bit on Stuart Skinner as well. I expected actually Jack Campbell to come across the bench once um, we gave up that third goal. Didn't, and the Oilers now regain the lead just moments later. And Stuart Skinner almost battling a 900 save percentage this game as well. So that's all it comes down to is here's Connor McDavid across the one-timer from Dry Settle off the pass from Kane. Doesn't connect. 8.37 to go here in this second period of play. Played ahead now by Trevor Moore, who will backhand towards the net. Can't get it going. Kings pick this one up. Another shot towards Skinner. Save is made. And we will have a stoppage in play once again. And friends, this will be where I remind you, if you're new to the channel or returning to the channel and you haven't hit that like button yet, definitely need to get you to hit that like button tonight. And uh, see Tang, yeah, I'd love if you could uh, hit that like button as well. That would be uh, very fantastic, my friend, if you could hit that like button on your way out as you go out to hit up the bars tonight. Hopefully uh, you're not hitting up the bars in you know where, hopefully you're going to the big city, but we'll find out as uh, I'm sure I'll hear how much trouble you get into soon enough. All right, here we go, Terrence, going for the Leafs as well. And so let's get this rolling, friends, as Nick Bugstad will take the face off here. And let's get this going. Face off one by Bugstad over to CeCe. CeCe's gonna try and Play this one back and forth as this one will now get out of the zone. And now the Oilers really getting that back and forth game going. Bukestad spinning this one around and that's going to be picked off by Byfield. Race back for the puck. CeCe with the wheels dives. Gets it over to Stuart Skinner who backhands it off the boards back to CeCe. Man, Cody CeCe, oh my goodness, somebody just got buried. Kyler Yamamoto just got absolutely crumpled and somehow got up. That is fantastic to see. He almost had a lot of injuries this year, and he just got absolutely nailed and bounced right back up like we've seen him do so many times. That's a fantastic sign, as this will be Kane picking this puck up off of the stick of an LA King, flicking it down the length of the ice to Drew Doughty. And this is um, back the other way for the Kings. Picked up there and played ahead as... Kane will play it down to Connor McDavid as he speeds into the Kings zone. Anderson, though, with the puck. Doughty takes a bump from Kane. Then Kulak runs Grundstrom into the boards. Picking it up now is Kane. Kane will go back to the point. Now Drysdale there. He will play it down low to McDavid. They are going to reel and deal around the zone a little bit here on this shift. Nice one-timer opportunity there for Kane, but his stick, and I mean explodes in every term of the word. That one just... All the way through. So here we go. Bert, is it a 3 2 series for Edmonton? Yes, it is. The Oilers can clinch this series here tonight should they win in the final 26 and a half minutes of this hockey game. 30 shots now for LA. They'll play it out from behind the net. 
Picking it up there is Drysdale. He will go across the ice to Fogel. Fogel can't get it going there. And now a nice play there from Fogel to get it down deep. Roy continues to play this puck in his own zone. He works it ahead. And this one will come back down low into the zone. Nice play there from Nurse bouncing it up off of the neck of Ryan McLeod coming back the other way. Matt Roy tries to play that one. Can't do it. And now 6.15 to go here in this second period as the Kings open up some ice. And that one, nice deflection there by Evan Bouchard to keep that one free and clear from the middle of the ice. Here comes Fogel. He'll drag the middle, turn it over immediately. And now the Kings back the other way. Three on three. Nice play from Derek Ryan to turn it over for the Kings. Take it away more or less. And now here's the... Kings firing this one down low. Bouchard will bat this one on the backhand. And Nurse around to the near side. Now Fogel trying to play this one in the middle. Fiala on the failed clear. Fires the shot. Stewart Skinner the glove save. Big time stop. And the Oilers will kind of dust up in the crease here as Deneau and Bouchard grab each other. And that is a big time stop there from Stuart Skinner. On that play, that's for sure. As that's an even bigger play. They're showing the replay of CC diving to get that puck back to Skinner. That was a big, big stop. And then that glove save was a big, big one as well. So there we go, friends. We again head to commercial break. What I want to do one more time is appeal to you. If you're tuning in for the first time here or returning and haven't hit that subscribe button as of yet, would love to have you aboard. Like I said, the pitch is tonight. If you're a Kings fan, you're hoping for Game 7. If you're an Oilers fan, you're either here for Game 7 or coming for the Oilers and Knights coming up right away sometime this week. But what I also want to say, if you're a Kings fan, I would love to have you aboard in the second round should the Oilers advance. Because, hey, it's the ultimate hate watch. It's the Knights and the Oilers in a series against each other where all you have to do is cheer for violence and chaos. I love doing that as a no hockey fan, so definitely if that's something that would appeal to you, that would be greatly appreciated to have you aboard as well. So, all right. That's where we're at right now. Money, welcome in. As, um, let's see what we got going here. Let's quickly do, 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 run up the watch time here one more time. 4.2 divided by 60. We are at 700. And 78 hours on watch time so far tonight. That is absolutely fantastic to see. And uh, King, you, yeah, that's a fair enough comment. You are allowed to dislike players on teams and dislike the team because of that. Eva, welcome in. And am I missing anyone else here? I think everybody else is coming in here. Eva, welcome in as well. You want to play the La Bamba for your bandwagon neighbors? Hey, that's that's something I can get behind right there. And there's the. Big hat Kings fans again in the stands. They uh, had those earlier in the series. A couple of Oilers fans in the stands as well. As they're showing off actually quite a few Oilers fans in the lower bowl tonight. Alejandro, welcome in. And uh, We are ready and back to it. Sorry that that's so loud. I mean, that's just kind of... I didn't think about which bottle I was choosing for tonight's live stream. As I chose the uh, more... Bigger bottle, I guess you could say, is this one's going to be the Kings firing it around down low to Kulak. 5.27 to go here in this second period of play. 31 shots on net. The Oilers continue to clear this one out of the zone. Now trying to play it ahead is Hyman. He's trying his best to just swim free. Couldn't do it against Dursey. And now picked up there by Walker back over to Dursey. Dursey, who has a goal in this game. He is part of why it is 4-3 for the Edmonton Oilers at this point. Coming back the other way. This one's going to come free for Walker, who will free it off the boards on a bounce and play it ahead to the far side. Now picking it up there is Fiala. Fiala goes over to Walker again. Walker over to Fiala. Here is it's played ahead, tipped in down low. Nurse able to get it across. Costin bounces it off a stick. And this continues to come to the near side now as the Kings and Oilers engaged in a 4-3 battle. Kind of has the same feeling as the end of the first period. The Oilers up by one, just... Both teams battling to the final whistle, but things kind of clamping down as the period goes along. There's been a lot of goal scoring here in this second period. Each team scoring two goals so far as here comes Ryan McLeod firing this around the boards. Clean cost and throws a heavy hit on Drew Doughty. Almost sent him flying, but Doughty good edge work to stay up on his feet. And then Yamamoto knocks down Gabe Velarde. Cost and big shot to Velarde. Comes free in front of the net. And back the other way now, backhanded down the length of the ice, Matthias Ekholm. 
has to come back and pick this one up. As now CC over to Ekholm. Ekholm will just stop up and skate with his puck. As this will be Ekholm over to the far side. Now picked up. Shot fired in there by the Oilers. Round on the near side boards. Kane's going to pick this one up for a really brief moment. But Ekholm comes up with it at the point. Now Kane with the puck. Battle off his stick there by Doughty. Doughty's going to free this one around the boards. Then with 3.35 to go here in this second period of play. He's going to look to make a play from out behind his own net. Goes to the far side to Mikey Anderson. Picked up instead by Trevor Moore. Back to Drew Doughty. And they still haven't exited the zone. Finally they do. Fire it in down low to Stuart Skinner who plays that one on a tip. And a good play there from Ekholm. Frees it up for the Oilers to kind of push it to the corner. So as the danger was averted off the broken stick in the far side. And Ekholm will bang it up off the boards. Now down low as this one's going to be picked up at the blue line. The Kings almost stripped there by Drysaddle. Still trying to strip the Kings is dry, so I couldn't do it. This one's going to come back the other way for Grunstrom as he is battled off that puck, and the Oilers continue to battle here as Drysdale trying to free it up. Kane gets it back to the blue line. Drysdale out of the zone. Nice play there to get it up. And now with 2.46 to go in this second period, the LA Kings come up with this puck once again, tip it in the neutral zone. Here's Kane, McDavid, and Drysdale busting wide. Off of the boards, though, McDavid sees it go far. So now Grunstrom plays it back to the middle. 2.30 to go as Blake Lazat across center. Here's Kupari. Fires the shot up over top of the net. 2.26 to go as now Roy will fire this shot into traffic. Big time! Denial there from Stuart Skinner. And now with Kupari backhanding this one in, it will be an offside call at the blue line. And we will have a stoppage in play right there. So that's where we're at. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So, Cody Cece taking a big hit there, but the Oilers escape in danger there as Stuart Skinner able to kick that one out. That was a big time save, that is for sure. And I mean, the more Stuart Skinner kicks out, the better off we will be. And David, yeah, the Oilers not exactly making a ton of uh, offensive pressure here on the LA Kings down the stretch. The Kings kind of having the better of it, but that's kind of how the rest of that first period went. So that if that's how it's going to go down the stretch, I'm going to be fine with it as long as the Oilers don't give up goals here in the final five minutes of each period. Because the Kings will fire that one to the far side corner offside or off a high stick down in the Kings zone. The faceoff comes. 32-19 the shots for the Kings. So like I said, they've, they've been piling shots on net. And just to let you know too, um, just letting you know we have hit Four minutes and 20 seconds average view duration on the stream. Don't mind me. And there it is. So let's get this going. Ooh. All right. Face off for the Oilers. Bugstad will draw in to take it. 2.04 to go here in the second period of play. As Bugstad will line up for this one with the LA Kings. Kopitar against them. Bugstad draws it back, but it hits Kopitar's knee and goes back into possession for the Kings. Kempe across the Oilers' line, batted back there by Darnell Nurse, now coming free. Big collision in the neutral zone between Hyman and Kempe. Sorry, Hyman and Doughty. And now coming the other way, Doughty's going to walk across the line. Nice play there by Nick Bugstad to free him back into the neutral zone. And this one now, Mikey Anderson with the puck. As things just slow down substantially here in this late second period, as was the case in that first period as well, as Darnell Nurse will fire this one around the boards. The Oilers clear the zone, but that will be an icing call, so we will have a stoppage in the play. 121 to go here in this one, friends. And if you haven't left a like yet on the stream, definitely let me know how you're enjoying things with either a like or a thumbs down. That's fair enough feedback as well. I don't see that anymore. YouTube's kind of stopped giving me numbers on that. I don't see that until the end of the live stream. But definitely if you'd be so kind to leave a like, let me know how you're enjoying things because that allows more people to find the live stream as well. Bugstad against Deneau in the face-off dot. It's so weird. I actually do think of Philip Deneau now as a full-time LA King after this couple of years gone by so now Nick Bugstad will take the face off he will drop back and win it forward for the Oilers and then win it back to Darnell Nurse that was a bold play but that was a big play there from Darnell Nurse and now Nugent Hopkins will lift it up down the ice 
Zach Hyman in on the attack, trying to get it going. He can't get it done. Kings fans screaming for a penalty. Don't get one. And this one's going to be a player. Uh, Fiala's lost his stick and just could not play that puck. Back the other way to the near side. It comes and it's nice and call against the Edmonton Oilers. Jason Walkman in. And uh, I don't know, this is it's tough, right? I mean, the Oilers have had some missed calls against them. The Kings have had some missed calls against them. And obviously, too, the Kings goals uh, have been what they have been as Gavrikov just kind of got hauled down with that stick around his chin. Zach Hyman's playing with a little bit of uh, risk to his game this uh, game, I guess you could say. Panthers versus Bruins, 4.30 p.m. Puck drop mountain time tomorrow, that's for sure. You want to tune into that one because that's going to be a fun one. If the Bruins lose, especially, they will brawl out against the Panthers, guaranteed. As Paul Maurice has somehow coached his Panthers team into Game 7 against the Conference champion Bruins. That's crazy. President's Trophy Bruins. The curse is real. 39.6 seconds to go. Face off down in the Kings zone because of an icing call. That's where we find ourselves, friends. Just about done this game six second period. Oilers fans in the stands. There's a couple of them at least. I'm sure, a couple fans. Flew in, we'll take the week at Disneyland, whatever it is. As McDavid will win this face off. Back now to Matias Ekholm. Ekholm will get this one around the zone as Drysdale backhands this down low to Kane. Now McDavid jumps in on stride. McDavid wheeling and dealing and back to the blue line to Bouchard. Bouchard looking to load up the shot. He'll rip it now, blocks in front and goes just wide of the open net as it just kind of lost all its momentum on the way to the net. And now, Crashing heavy as Bouchard over to the far side. Iofalo trying to get it going. Ekholm will fire it around the near side boards. And now Drysdale trying to play this puck. But can't get it going as now Doughty will play this one. Back in his own zone. Shot hammered into the Oilers zone. Glove save for Stuart Skinner. That will do it for the end of this second period, my friends. Welcome aboard and thank you for being along for the ride here on Dolany TV. This evening, my pleasure to have you. If you're new to the channel, what I need you to do tonight is hit that subscribe button here on the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you've already done that, leave a like on the stream if you haven't. I'll be right, right back. Just going to go refill my water bottle and I will get back to you here in a matter of time to recap this second period. Let's go.
All right, friends, let's do this. Let's get this intermission up and done with. Sorry, my apologies for having to run away. That's just kind of how these things go. But um, that's where we're at right now. 4-3, the lead for the Edmonton Oilers. And Rogers Place and the Moss Pit and Ford Tailgate Party are all going crazy so far. It's been absolutely fantastic. And hopefully uh, for the Oilers, we can get this job done right here, right now. At the end of three periods of play. I really can't afford overtime tonight. Obviously, that's exactly um, what's going to happen here tonight. But hopefully for the Oilers' sake and my sake, we can just get this job done. And friends, for those of you tuning in that are wondering why, like James, I can't show the screen and commentate at the same time. is It is the visuals and the audio that are copyright of the NHL. So if I show either or, I do get a copyright strike and I essentially lose my ability to live stream and lose my channel if I do it twice. So I would prefer not to do that, I will tell you that much, that's for sure. And that's really where I am at right there as Farm Girl's back in the chat right now as we're enjoying the intermission as it currently stands. And let me just quickly... Um, throw this together one more time here as I just want to quickly add up the watch time here for us as we are cruising along up over 932 hours so we should be able to set that all-time record here for the watch time during the playoffs if we have ourselves a good intermission and a good third period without overtime if we get overtime we are going to dummy some numbers tonight that is for sure so clean Costin's ice time this series through two periods of play he has 5 minutes and 49 seconds with 2 goals, but the most he's played is Game 5 where he had 10 minutes and 17 seconds because the Oilers were in a more comfortable position all game long. Ina and M Miggy walk in, and uh, Merv, one more goal is all we need for the win. That's what we'd hope. Hopefully the Oilers can find a way to score that one more goal and then get this done. And Dusted Flipperdoo, you're watching the game at the pub. Well, Flipper do if you want to shout out the pub, if you feel comfortable doing that, definitely. I always love giving the local pubs a uh, good shout out here on Dolany TV. And I'm going to welcome in as well from Pierceland. Hey, hey, what's up? I like to see it. Tuning in from Pierceland. That's huge. For, for those of you that don't know, I guess that's that's way too easy for me to explain. Tuning in to Pierceland is huge. Pierceland is the next town over if you look at the map in Cold Lake, Saskatchewan, like Cold Lake's right on the border with Saskatchewan pretty much, Pierceland is the first town over in Saskatchewan. So that's what you need to know there. As um, What else do we got? As uh, Scott, you're a huge Skinner fan, but I'm a little worried about our chance to win if he doesn't play at the top level. Well, tonight, he just needs to clamp down in the third period and we will be done and dusted. That is for sure. And we should be able to get him going, that's for sure. As, um, what else do we got? I'm just trying to make sure I catch it. Um, let's see. Let's see what we got. Um, anyone else asking any other questions? Nothing else, really, so we should be good. Um, referee versus Oilers, Ian and Miggy. Uh, that's, that's something that I kind of came accustomed to here in, um, here in this series, so I'm not too too worried at all and uh let's get it done is right yes that's exactly what we need to do for purdue we just need to finish this game off win in the third period i mean i will take triple overtime trust me i am i love big time youtube numbers and craziness and 13 14 1500 people watching the live stream that that stuff is stuff i'd live for obviously but i will also much more rather take an oilers victory in regulation and be able to go to bed as that would be fantastic. And Ruby, here's the thing I'll tell you about my nerves. I really don't feel the nerves because I'm so busy delivering a live performance that I don't really get to um, feel the nerves at all. That's kind of the question. So, and uh, yeah, no work tomorrow. That's the nice part. No work tomorrow because it is Sunday. So I don't go back to work till Monday, which is going to be nice. Although I will have to peel my eyes up and go to bed by uh, probably about 10 o'clock to give you some kind of video tomorrow morning. That's for sure. All right. I am loving my cat right now. He is my little stress ball. That's kind of the situation too. And uh, Derek Ryan, oh no, going on a line change there. And what do we got going here? Um, uh, we got anything else? 
Jack, you've got the confidence the Oilers do it. Medusa, exactly. If the Oilers stay out of the box, everything should be fine. And uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> that's where we're at. Tyler, welcome in as well to the chat. You're saying the Kings will win based on the shots. I wouldn't read into that too, too much as of yet. Depends on what the Oilers get going here. So, and Shadow, yeah, it's already 126. You don't need triple overtime. That is fair. That is absolutely fair. I would uh, definitely uh, feel for you there. That would bring us to what? Just about five in the morning if you get it going. And there you go. So they've got, um, there you go. You've got uh, the Leafs celebrating the overtime winner. 30,000 people are in downtown Edmonton right now celebrating this game for the Edmonton Oilers. So that means 6,000 people in the Ice District Plaza and 6,000 people in the Ford tailgate spot. That is absolutely insane. And that is insane. So, all right, what do we got going here? Um, do, 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 do. Oh, looks like Oilers Nation has retweeted the uh, Clean Costin tweet from back in October last year where the Oilers have acquired Clean Costin from St. Louis in exchange for defenseman Dmitry Samarukov. That still seems like a crazy trade. I was really scared about giving up Sam Rukov and the Oilers end up working it out here. So that's fantastic. And that is where we are at. Just trying to get some Leafs, Oilers, uh, or sorry, Leafs, um, Leafs, uh, Leafs Lightning recap here. As, um, do, 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 nothing happening here. As... We are two minutes to go here. Or two minutes or so away from the period. I don't know. Hopefully. As um, we get this rock and rolling. And it looks like we're going to see the retweets about um, retweets about clean cost in all night. So see what happens. Our welcome in. And Jack will welcome in as well. As we are just going to get the reaction pouring in tonight. That is for sure. And we should be ready to rock and roll. So, <laughs> yeah, we are crushing along what is going to be a big victory if the Oilers can pull it off. That's that's the biggest part tonight. If the Oilers can pull off a big victory tonight, that comes together. So it's been almost 7,000 days since the Toronto Maple Leafs last won a playoff series. It looks like Ed Belfer was in net for the Toronto Maple Leafs back then. That is absolutely unreal to believe. But um, yeah, so hopefully the Oilers can do their thing here tonight and just cap off this hockey game, get us a big time victory, and then take home what will be a huge start to round two against the Vegas Golden Knights. The more we win, the better off we are. So Be good if the Oilers can get it done, that's for sure. Just seeing that uh, the stream's frozen up as it normally does about once every live stream. It tends to freeze up a little bit. So let's refresh that there and get this going back to full screen as that will get us going back live. And we should be ready to rock and roll into the final bit of this live stream, friends. This is the third period almost set to get underway here as, yeah, the dog is... Uh, Freaking out. I'm not sure again. I, I think, I don't know if somebody's ripping motorbikes up and down the back alley or somebody's ripping bikes up the alley. I don't know what's going on. Kind of the weird part of living where I do. It's kind of a weird mix. You're just never sure what's going down the street because of just being out in the sticks. But that's fine and dandy. As hopefully the Oilers can come out with a very good effort here in... This third period, pound in the goals, pound them in, pound them in, and away we go. Angie, welcome in as well. Just about missed you there. And uh, Bobby, welcome in as well as we're just almost set for this third period. I've said it all night, right? I started it off at 7.30, two and a half hours ago. I said, just get me to puck drop, watch the puck drop, and then get me to the um, end of the hockey game where the Edmonton Oilers have won the hockey game because that's really... All that I care about here at the end of the day is just get me to puck drop, make sure that puck is dropped, and then get me to the end of the hockey game because I just want to 
know the others have won and gotten this job done. So, all right, we are just about set for this one to get underway here. As Monday night, game seven scenarios, the Oilers Kings would be at 8 p.m. Mountain Time and the Devils and um, Devils and uh, Rangers are at 6 p.m. if the Oilers win, 5 p.m. if the Kings win. So that's what we need to know right there. So see what comes out of this one here. And it looks like we're going to have some replays here of the Oilers. From May 19th, 1984, Wayne Gretzky scoring a goal. And I believe in net for the uh, New York Islanders would have been Billy Smith back then. And there's a whole bunch of old school Oilers right there. That's for sure. The dogs welcome in. And let's get this going here, friends. We are just about set. As we head to commercial break one more time and then we should be ready to rock and roll. As, um, what do we got? Gotta get this job done here. I'm seeing everybody starting to tune back in the live stream. Carter, welcome aboard. We should uh, be ready to rock here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of one of those things, right? I mean, a lot of people out here have the dirt bikes, have the quads. What I see a lot of nowadays is the side-by-sides. That's a big, big thing here in Alberta nowadays, the side-by-sides. Great for great for uh, working around on the property on a farm, right? So, I mean, the side-by-sides make sense, but see a lot of those now, and especially headed towards town. So, all right, what do we got? We've got not much happening. The Leafs Mobile yelling and screaming there is... There are a lot of Leafs fans jacked up about winning that first round series. And I mean, you know what? For them, if they lose in the second round against Boston or Florida, celebrate this first round like it's the Stanley Cup final because good on them to finally get that job done. That is huge at the end of the day. Friends, again, if you're new to the channel, um, I want you to consider hitting that subscribe button. I need to show that graphic one more time. Just I forgot to do that in the second inter or first intermission and I figure I better do that in the second intermission here just to give you an idea we're up to 12,128 subscribers if you want to be around in case of a possible game seven or as an Oilers fan you want to be here for game excuse me game one against the Vegas Golden Knights I got you covered by hitting that subscribe button again it's all free I will never ask you to do anything that costs money so Definitely just consider hitting that subscribe button and that would be greatly appreciated. And if you haven't hit the like button on the stream as well yet, definitely thank you so much. Jonas, welcome in. Thank you so much for being along for the ride tonight. And um, we are just about ready for the start of the third period here. Hopefully they are just feeding us. I mean feeding us the commercials tonight. All right, let's get it going. So... That's where we're at, Justin. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much again, friends. If you have hit the like button, but definitely if you haven't already, that would be greatly appreciated. As appreciate that, Jonas. That's uh, hopefully for us going to be a big finish of a hockey game for the Oilers. We need them to clutch this one up because I just I can't afford to be up past midnight on Monday night if it goes to overtime in Game Seven. That's the only problem. And Kylo, I can't show the game due to copyright again friends this is something that i don't i'm actually not upset that i have to explain i do understand kind of where we come from right illegal streams run all through the season and then they usually clamp down in the playoffs but yeah definitely if uh if this isn't your thing that's totally fine right i, I have no problem if this isn't something you don't want to be along for the ride for it's a completely wild thing to me if you would have told me back when i was first becoming an oilers fan that Sometime in the distant future, I'd be sitting in my basement watching the Oilers game with a mic and a camera in front of me and talking to 613 of you, just trying to do my best to keep you informed with hockey game. I would have thought, I, I would have thought you were crazy. I, th I would have thought that was the coolest thing ever, but I would have thought you were crazy. But uh, that's kind of the craziest thing that's come this season is we get this great platform to all hang out and watch the Oilers game together. Here we go. Oilers Kings start of the third period 4-3 the Oilers lead at crypto.com arena as we are just about set to get this one up and underway here friends and uh, yes indeed Smurfy yes indeed 
as we are going to get this going. Here, Mick Mac, welcome into the stream as well. Let's do this as we've got the Moss Pit there in Rogers Place Ice District area. And uh, they've got the Lance Maxwell doodle there as well as the Oilers winning 6-3 in Game 5. And uh, yeah, that's where we found it right now tonight is we just need to win this one. And uh, <laughs> they've got a clip of Scott Oak. As, uh, yeah, here we go. We are about set for this third period of play. They were just going over some of this. As Chase, thank you so much for being along for the ride as well tonight. As here we go. Face off at center ice. Nick Bugstad, Zach Hyman was greasing across center ice. Couldn't get it done. And now Kopitar wins the face off. The Oilers, though, have the puck. They fired around to the far side. My stream quality is absolutely tanked. Welcome to Sportsnet now on a Saturday night in the sticks. As this one's going to come back the other way. Here comes... Adrian Kempe out to Victor Arvidsson. Shot fired up over top of the net. Or Stuart Skinner made the save. Who's to tell? I couldn't tell you. It kind of is kind of blurry on my television set as the Kings will fire this one down the length of the ice. That will be an icing call as that one bumped off the boards fast. And uh, 19.34 now to go here in this third period of play. And Arvidsson fires this shot from the outside. Right on Skinner, off of his shoulder, and up and off the end glass. 19.34 to go. Just bleed the time now. That's all I have to say. Score a goal. Bleed the time. Let's get this job done right here, right now. So let's finish this one off. As this will be Leon Dry still going to the far side boards, trying to win that face off. Kane wins it around on the near side. Nice play there from Ekholm to scramble it back for Dry. Still gets it down low to McDavid. Spin and... Well, spin and win right there as he goes around the boards and comes up with that puck twice over. Now back to Bouchard. Kempe eats a cross check from Bouchard but can't get it done. And this one's going to come down below into the Oilers zone. 19-10 to go here in this third period of play. Drysdale picks it up ahead. He's going to fire it down low into the Kings zone. This one comes around to the far side boards in the corner now. Tied up. McDavid frees it back to Ekholm. Ekholm over to Bouchard. Bouchard fires it down low, can't get it going, and now McDavid will spin and wheel it around, and he continues to spin to the far side, looking for Ekholm, bleeding down the right side, couldn't do it, and now Ekholm lucky not to take a hooking call there, I hope, as 18.41 remains here in this third period, the Oilers and Kings are off and running here in this third period of play, and now coming back the other way on a two-on-one, the Oilers the other way, as here comes McDavid across the line, backhand off the side of the net, would have loved to see him seal that one right there. So now coming the other way for the Oilers to the near side. Gavrikov getting it going. 18-15 to go here in this third period to play. As Byfield will fire it down low to Stuart Skinner. 18-08 to go in this third period to play. And the Oilers continue to battle as this one's going to be flicked down low into the Oilers offensive zone. Chasing after this one is Ryan McLeod. This one picked up now by Derek Ryan back to McLeod. McLeod battles this one in the near side. Dayarnay gets it going down low. This one now to Fogel. Fogel, who's in need of a big goal this series as well here in game number six. Would be good to see him score as he'll come around behind the net. He continues to battle around to the front of the net. Can't get it going. And this one now comes back up into the middle of the ice where the Kings will come back the other way. As this one will be shot back into the King's zone. Tipped down by Corpusallo. Doughty will pick up this puck. And with 17.22 to go here in this third period. Puck played ahead. All the way down to Stuart Skinner who bats it off the end boards. The Kings played around to the far side. This one now up high into the Oilers zone. Knocked down. Stuart Skinner big time save off a kick uh, towards the net. And now the Kings setting up the attack. Anderson tip play in front. Anderson reloads. Stuart Skinner. Glove save and a beauty to stop that one right there. So that is a huge, huge save there for Stuart Skinner. So big one right there. There we go. All right. Let's see what we can find here on Twitter. Is this going to be a big time save for Stuart Skinner? That was about as big of a save as he can possibly get. Let me see if it's going to let me refresh here, as it will. And do, 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 do. Um, nothing much happening here. Perfect. 
And let's go chase this one right here, right now. Is this going to be Cody Cece firing this one around as the Kings pick it up in the zone? Arvidsson rips the shot. Skinner the save. Don't mind me at all. That's another big save there from Stuart Skinner as that one is another stoppage in play for the Edmonton Oilers as well. And I'm seeing all kinds of cat hair floating around down here as uh, petting that little kitty here tonight is definitely increase the allergens down here in the basement that's for sure is this one's going to be one back by the Oilers off the face off played back into the middle of the ice down to the near side picked up by Arvidsson Arvidsson across the blue line 16 and a half minutes to go here in this third period as this one's going to come back battle in there to the boards and now freed up into the middle of the ice nice play there for Zach Hyman down the length into the zone Mikey Anderson battling, couldn't come up with that puck. And now to the near side, Kopitar across the far side. Fired into the zone as it's a nice pick up there by Stuart Skinner. CC and Darnell Nurse will recover this puck and get it going. And now here's a chance. As, uh, yes, absolutely, we need the Oilers to find that next goal. The Oilers still at 19 shots. The Kings up to 37 already in this game and now this one's going to be fired back into the Oilers zone nope never mind peeled off there by the Oilers in the neutral zone now fired in as the Oilers just about took a too many men call and now picked up there by the Oilers and fired ahead yet again into the neutral zone if the Oilers want to play in the neutral zone the entire third period I'm going to be a-okay with that no problem all right there on my behalf if the Oilers want to just keep batting that puck around in the neutral zone Instead, it's going to be Connor McDavid picking it up. He's going to wheel and deal into the zone and get over to Leon Dreisel. Ooh, on the goal line and scooped away by the LA Kings. Last second, as that one was a big time chance there for Dreisel and McDavid, and they just about connected for a beauty. 15 20 to go here in this third period of play. And my eyes are going real buggy now because the problem is. I've been wearing my glasses all day, and then I chose not to wear my glasses for the stream. I should have done the reverse. 15.04 to go here in this third period to play as the Kings get a shot fired towards Corpusalo. He makes the save. He now credited with 17 saves on the game. Fired back the other way. Hello, Boo. Hello, Boo. Come here. As this is going to be picked up there by Quinton Byfield. Down low, and that'll be a nice hit for Clean Costin. Or is that actually Ryan McLeod throwing that hit? Okay, as... Brett Kulak will come back, fire it off the boards to the high middle of the neutral zone, trying to free it up. How about Warren Fogle playing it ahead? Fogle will dish off to the side to Nick Bugstad. Bugstad down low. He's going to work back to the far side point. He's going to go far across. Can't get it on net. And now this one again battles there for Hyman, who rips the shot. Save made by Jonas Corpusalo, and we will have a stoppage in play. And Richie... You're doing some pretty big time math there, and I'm not thinking you're wrong. It's definitely friends. If you haven't hit that like button yet, make sure to do that. And again, you've gotten a sample of play by play here in the third period. What I want you to do is consider hitting that subscribe button here on Doll Any TV. With that, that's a real simple pitch. I'll explain why later. Free to do, by the way. So definitely, if you have the chance, please do. And let's get this going. As 14, 18 to go, the linesman wheels back into possession here. As let's get this roll in a face-off for Nick Bugstad against Andre Kopitar. Kopitar has the face-off probability and Bugstad wins it. But the Oilers stick explodes on the play and then Hyman's taken down and it's a mess of a play. And it's back the other way for Kopitar as he's going to lead across to Kempe who rips the shot down to Kopitar. The kick save from Stuart Skinner and another beauty right there. A big time stop with 14.05 to go here in this third period of play. For the Edmonton Oilers right there. Another huge save from Stuart Skinner. His 37th of the night. The Kings 40th shot. And Mojo we are hoping. That is what we are hoping for for sure. And uh, yeah. No, it's been. Um, it's been a crazy finish to this one so far. As we just need to. Up and get this one done, as Kopitar can't believe that. 14.05 to go here in the third period, as this will be a face-off one back now for Doughty, who will play this one down low. Face-off wins leaders right now. McDavid is 11 for 15. That, that blows me away, that McDavid in an elimination game is 11 for 15 in the face-off dot. But yes, he is, 
This one's going to be one back for Trevor Moore, who's going to get down low into the near side corner in the other zone. Mikey Anderson tips shot, and Aya Fallow gets it right into the chest of Stuart Skinner. So that's another big save right there. So that one comes tipped in and then tipped up into Stuart Skinner right there. So we will have another stoppage and play. Friends, welcome aboard to Dolany TV. Like I said, I'd give you that pitch on why you need to hit that subscribe button tonight. Well, friends, if you're new to the channel, I want you aboard. If you're an Oilers fan for the rest of this playoff series, I want you catching the news. I want you hearing the thoughts. I want you talking amongst each other here on the channel as much as possible because, like you see, big-time Oilers fan, right? I've got jerseys dating back in the 16, 17 season when I could first uh, buy jerseys back then, right? Um, unfortunately, did not have a lot of money throughout the college years. My uh, family members actually came together and bought this one for me, so it's special. This, if you've been around the channel this year, you know what jersey this is. There's a reason there's no number showing there. Obviously this, for those of you that know, I bought this probably uh, just a month before I quit doing this Oilers thing back in 2021. Uh, this one I bought this year for a nice little gift to myself, and then this Connor McDavid one. The reason I actually have a McDavid jersey, it's kind of funny. It's not because I wanted a McDavid jersey. I did Willie McDavid, or yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, I guess. Willie McNelson, whatever you want to say. Uh, the, that great legend that we lost this year. We uh, we did uh, that costume for Halloween a couple years back in 2019. So that's where we're at with that. All right, let's get this going, friends. We are just about ready. To get back to action here is we are going to get back the Oilers turnovers in this hockey game. Yeah, the Oilers have had some costly turnovers, but hopefully all is going to be good here the rest of the way home. They're not going to turn over the puck and we should be good. Welcome aboard all 700 of you now as we've just crossed that plateau here on the stream. That's pretty unreal. And Robo, thank you so much for it as have a beer, relax, it's YouTube. Hey, you know what? Um, it's all great and dandy as I do appreciate the money thrown down as... Um, no, I, I have a big time passion for the play by play. It's something that I've wanted to do my entire life and to be able to sit here and do it for all you back home. Keep you informed with the game. That is my great pleasure. As here's DRNA off the face off dot over to Brett Kulak. 13.40 to go, tipped into the neutral zone. Quinton Byfield will play this one down. Puck battled there and now one ahead by Kyler Yamamoto, tipped into the zone on a dump in to the far side corner. Yamamoto wins the battle. Yamamoto has had a great game tonight, actually, to be honest with you. Yamamoto has had a fantastic night. The shot fired by Brett Kulak. Yamamoto just drew a penalty as well. And looks like we will have a power play for the Edmonton Oilers upcoming. Vernon, welcome in. And hopefully the Oilers can capitalize here. Mike, Mike, welcome in. And this one's going to be worked in here for an Oilers power play. That's, that'll be a face-off in the zone. Is this one, obviously, Yamamoto. Just great game there. And then Kulak firing that point shot. What was that? That Was that the penalty on Yamamoto right there? As he's, yeah, he's getting held up. Sorry, I thought it was a broken stick. But it's Yamamoto getting held up in front. So that's where we're at. Hopefully we get it going. Uh, <laughs> player, congratulations. Yes, as he says, congratulations right there. So... Let's do this. Two minutes to go with Scott. We only mention him when he does things right, right? That's when we should be mentioning him because when we mentioned him on the last shift, things didn't go so well. So Tom McClellan talking to the referees right now. 13-18 to go. The Oilers 9 for 15 on the power plays. The Kings 7 for 21. The power plays in this series operating at 44.4%. John, you're a... Uh, you're a Flames fan tuning in from Dublin, Ireland. All right, game on. I don't mind that at all. I've actually got some friends over in Ireland right now, to be honest with you. And, um, yeah, Robo, absolutely. I definitely uh, definitely do like this format as well myself. And 40 shots and counting for the LA Kings. They are laying everything on net. They know the secret, right? The more shots on Skinner, the more likely he is to give up a goal. But right now it is where it is. And, uh... Margaret, yeah, the Oilers over the years sign your jersey, and uh, awesome. That's fantastic. Turning 23 this year. Wow, crazy. That's So you've had that for almost 20 years at this point. That is insane. 
13-18 to go here in this third period. Bouchard off the faceoff. And the Oilers are off and running here on the power play as this one's going to come back to the blue line now. Bouchard picking this one up over to the far side. The Oilers wheeling and dealing as they continue to move this puck. Dry settle back to the blue line. Looking to try and get something freed up here as this one will come back to Dry settle back to the point now to Bouchard. Bouchard near side. The Oilers power play two for three so far in game five. Back now Bouchard one more time. One timer for McDavid tipped in front. And that one battles through a couple of times. So this one is going to go down low now to Stuart Skinner. And it'll be picked up by Evan Bouchard. Bouchard will play this one ahead to Drysdale. Drysdale will go back to Connor McDavid. McDavid flying up through the middle over to the far side. Nugent Hopkins battling there. He will free this puck up off the boards. Play it down low. Kings will free this one up for the time being. As this one comes back down the length of the ice. Skinner. Playing this puck, sleeping in front. Goal for the Kings. Goal for the Kings. That is a tough, tough beat right there for Stuart Skinner. And I, I talked about Mike Smith earlier. That is about as Mike Smith-esque. I thought the first one was about as Mike Smith-esque as you could possibly get there that I was talking about earlier. But that is about as Mike Smith-esque as you can possibly get handling the puck in an elimination game in the Stanley Cup playoffs as Skinner gaffs that puck right in front and then Deneau puts it home and scores the 4-4 goal. Friends, honestly, if we go to overtime, it's once again me and my big yap going at fault right there. Is, um, that's right, I talked about it. I said I want triple overtime tonight. I think you guys kind of talked me into saying I want triple overtime tonight, but that is brutal right there. And uh, Ace, that's another good one. Yeah, Ty Conklin in game one against the Carolina Hurricanes. That's another good one to invoke right there. As Evan Bouchard will pick this one up and play it across the ice. The Oilers no longer on the power play by the looks of it, or are they? I'm not too sure, but oi, oi, oi. That was, um, that was a tough Goal to give up right there. Deneau's second of the playoffs, shorthanded. And that one's about as tough as it gets. So this one will come back against the boards. The Kings still on the penalty kill. I think the Oilers still on the power play, to be honest with you. So this one will come down low. And now we are going to see the Kings fans flood in here as well because they're back in it. So let's see what happens here as Bouchard gets it picked up in his own zone. Trying to play this one ahead. The Kings fans are rocking. Here's Byfield two on one back the other way. This one's going to be shot towards the middle. Nice play there by the Oilers. Pick it up. Nice save from Skinner on the save right there. And uh, now a little bit of a battle in front. And this series is going to take a nasty turn if somebody makes a big hit or something. 11.07 to go. And yeah, the Skinner chants are coming down here at... Crypto.com Arena as well. As Stuart Skinner made that play just a little too fast. Flubbed up on the puck. Literally watched his stick flub over the stick. And that one stuck. So, alright. Here we go. As uh, Jimmy welcome in as well. I'm seeing... Um, seeing this one as Skinner goes to the bench for a different stick. And here we go, friends. Face off to the left of Stuart Skinner. 11 7 to go in this third period. It's no longer about walking it home. Clean Costin needs to score the hat trick right here, right now. That's all it comes down to now for the Oilers is this one's going to be played ahead into the Kings zone. That is going to be an icing call, but the Oilers almost beat them to the play. Just could not do it. Farm Girl, welcome back in. But um, wow, that was. A turn of events there for the Oilers. I really, really, really hope we can recover from this. That's really all that comes back down to it. But, friends, we are aboard for what is going to be a crazy finish in this one. 10.59 to go in the third period to play 4-4 between the Kings and Oilers. Here's the thing. That's the problem. Is goaltending was a question mark for the Oilers coming in the series. We didn't know what the question mark was going to be after game two for the Kings, who uh, got some pretty solid goaltending out of Corpus Allo the first two. Things have kind of opened up for him over the course of the series, so we'll see what comes out of it tonight. As that fifth goal could be all pivotal, that is for sure. As this one's going to be one back now for the Kings as they come back in 
Out of their zone to the near side boards. Dursey's going to fire this one into the Oilers' end. Far side now. Kulak backhands this one to himself. Up the boards now to Ryan McLeod. He'll go across to the middle now. Loading up Vinny DeHarnay across the blue line. This one's going to be a shot. It's fired. Save made twice over by Corpusallo. And this continues to go here. This guy in this white coat is really angry about something. As it's going to be played back into possession there by Bugstad. 10-13 remaining here in this third period of play. This is, you guys wanted to know when the nerves hit me? This is when the nerves hit me. 10-06 remaining now. This third period will be flipped in down low as we are officially halfway through the third period and the Oilers have choked the lead here in this third period. Big hit there by Nick Bugstad. No call upcoming for the Oilers as it looks like we will play on here. And then the Oilers again splay out another King. Still no call coming. They are letting them play here in this third period compared to the standard of the rest of the series, mind you. And this one's going to come back across for the Kings and tie up there. The Oilers go down. I think Yamamoto just ate a knee from Evander Kane. Back across the line, the Kings get to the attack. Now they're in the far side corner. 9.28 remaining as time continues to clean off the clock here. And this one's going to come down the length of the ice into the Kings' end for a little bit of a slow, slow play here as the Kings will load up the line changes. Gavrikov will get it going. 9.14 to go in this third period. Played up ahead. Tipped in on Skinner. He will chop this puck. He will backhand it off the boards. Now played ahead and picked up there by Zach Hyman who goes try and go middle. Can't do it. Kings pick it up to no back the other way. He will fire it over and now picked up by Aya Fallow for a brief moment. Kings fans are ready to jump out of their seats right here. So this one's going to come back to the blue line. Now fired by Doughty down low behind the net to Aya Fallow. Aya Fallow looking to make the play. He does. Now over to Anderson, the shot tips in front, 8.37 to go here in this third period. I'm sorry, I want to be more excited. I just barely can get enough breath to say words based on how fast my heart's beating right now. 8.28 to go, the Oilers bang it off the boards, can't get the clear out of the zone to the far side to the near side. And here's Zach home battling Trevor Moore as this one continues to battle around behind the net. Now in front, Bouchard able to move it off the boards and play it up the near side boards. Hyman looking for this puck. Can't get it by field. It gets it down low to Aya Fallow against Bouchard. Back to the high point. The shot coming not from the far side. Now to the near side. The shot up over top of the net. Out of play there by Quinton Byfield, friends. Eight minutes remain here. I'm going to be smart about this. I'm going to tell you to hit that subscribe button here on Dolan TV. Nope, that's the intro to the shorts. My apologies for seeing that. We'll play that at the end of the stream, I promise you. But what we need to do right now is tell you to hit that subscribe button. I'll be right, right back as I'm going to hit the bathroom break and refill the water because we got a distance to go. All right, let's finish this hockey game off, shall we? Let's finish it off in regulation, friends. I think that would be what the best idea would be right here, right now for the Edmonton Oilers. Everybody, welcome in. If you're just tuning in for the uh, first time here on the live stream, thank you so much for being along for the ride. Really do appreciate everybody spending their evening with me here. It's 4-4 between the Oilers and Kings as we get set here for this stretch down the stretch in this one. Um, all right, 
let's get this done is we are ready for the face off to the right of Stuart Skinner and let's see what we can do here is this one's going to come over to Darnell Nurse battled there freely for the Oilers clean cost and picks up the puck Costin's going to free it up into the neutral zone. Tipped ahead by Yamamoto. Yamamoto fires the shot. I would love to see him score there. As this one would have been fantastic. 7.45 going back the other way. As this one will be across the blue line. Tipped on down to Stuart Skinner who will cover up the puck and make the stoppage in play. Or I think actually it's an icing call against the LA Kings. So with 7.41 to go here in this third period, we'll have a face off in the Kings zone. As that was a fantastic play there by Costa, and then an even better hand-eye coordination play by Yamamoto to almost free himself up for a beautiful shot. 7.41 to go here in this third period to play 4-4 the tie. Back to the blue line now for the Oilers as they will try and fire this shot towards the net. Kane goes in behind. The Oilers see this one chipped up off the boards as Ekholm will battle there against Arvidsson. Arvidsson hammers it into the Oilers' end. This puck takes a weird bounce off the stanchion and now comes free for Ekholm to play it ahead. Drysdale takes the run from Gavrikov, able to make the play ahead or the Oilers. Bouchard got it down deep into the Kings' end and now back the other way. The Kings tr quickly transition as Trevor Moore gets to the puck. Deneau battling there as Drysdale continues to battle behind the net in behind the Oilers' Zone here as Gavrikov comes across, makes a quick play to the middle, and that one is going to be kicked ahead by Drysel. Nice play to get it going forward. Drysel is going to get across the line. Here's Bouchard, the shot loading. Bouchard wheels and deals behind the net. The rebound. <coughs> oh boy. That's what happens when you go too long. Let me grab a drink of water. Sorry. All right, all right, that's where we're at. 6.30 to go here in this third period of play. Dry still goes down low. <coughs> I don't know if I swallowed a cat hair or what. Don't know what happened there. As this one will come in behind. The Oilers' Nick picked up by Cody Cece, left there for Darnell Nurse, over to Cece, fired in. Down deep, 6.04 to go here in this third period of play as this one now comes to the near side. The Kings pick up the puck. They've got six minutes of which to work to keep their season alive or force overtime as this one will come down into the far side corner now for the Kings around the zone, but the Oilers able to meet it there and flip it out into the neutral zone. Picked up there by Mikey Anderson. 5.41 to go here in this third period of play as the Kings continue to move the puck in their own zone. This one just battling around a little bit here, and all of a sudden, yeah, the stream number's picking up as well. 5.30 to go as we are in for a heck of a finish here tonight as Kopitar will play this puck, and now this one will be worked across by the Kings through the neutral zone back to Kopitar. He'll get down deep into the zone. The shot fired from the point, blocked in front. The Oilers back the other way. Doughty's 91.4. Mile an hour block, a huge one right there as this one continues to battle for the Oilers into the near side corner. Leaning on him there is Drew Doughty again. I don't know who that was leaning on Brett Kulak by the looks of it. Two on one the other way. Here's Adrian Kempe battling free, but that is again the Oilers' a good active stick to keep that one away from the Kings getting to the middle of the ice as this one's going to come back the other way as Guys getting the hearts going as well for this big time finish here with the last 4.40 to go in this third period to play. Oilers free up the puck now to the middle of the ice. Coming across the ice, Ekholm dumps it in deep. Ekholm really not a guy who loves jumping in uh, too heavy into the rush, but a guy who's definitely scored some get down, get greasy goals so far to start this Oilers tenure that he has coming up for the rest of his career here in Edmonton as this one's going to be flipped back into the neutral zone and at the Oilers line. Matias Ekholm now with the puck 4-12 to go here in this third period of play as this one will be Ekholm waiting off to Evan Bouchard. Bouchard will play this one ahead into the Oilers zone, offensive zone that is, as that's a nice turnover there for Evander Kane off the stick of an LA Kings player. Battled back to the blue line, can't keep it in. 3.57 to go. Back the other way and now Kane... Will battle there with a couple of Kings players, and CeCe was able to free that one up. 3.46 to go here in this third period. Down to Mikey Anderson in the Kings zone. 
I'm sorry guys, I'm rattled. The nerves are real right now. I mean, I haven't been nervous much in this series other than the overtimes. I can barely keep myself together at the best of it right now as this one's coming back for Darnell Nurse. This one's going to come across for Nurse back the other way as he's going to speed across the line. The shot fired wide of the net now for the Oilers. Darnell Nurse still wheeling and dealing back to the blue line. The shot from CeCe tips in front. Yamamoto picks up the puck. McLeod over behind the net as McLeod will go back when fourth with another Oilers player. I think that's Clean Costin. And here's Yamamoto wheeling, wheeling, wheeling. He's going to release the shot. Scores! Kyler Yamamoto breaks the tie and puts us up 5 4. Let's go! That's a big time goal with 3.02 to go. Yamamoto, the man that gets the goal. I mean, he has taken a lot of heat all series long all season long, and Kyler Yamamoto quiets the crowd at Crypto.com Arena with just an absolute laser beam of a shot that somehow finds its way through the crowd as Yamamoto just wheels off the far side corner, fires a shot, and it drifts. I mean, Corpus Allo, we're making fun of Stuart Skinner tonight. Corpus Allo, no clue where that puck was coming from, no clue where that puck was, and it goes back of the net. And that is about as big of a goal as we could possibly get from Kyler Yamamoto. The Oilers bench elated with that one. That is huge for the Edmonton Oilers. And now it's just about clamping it down. And you want to talk about puck handling mistakes. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it when I went upstairs there for that quick break. I got to tell you, how would Stuart Skinner scoring an empty net goal to seal the series kind of sum up how this series has gone for him? Would be absolutely fantastic. Three minutes to go here in this third period of play. Hammered on net by Gavrikov. Goes into the corner. The Kings coming here heavy as they are going to press, press, press. As there is going to be a whole bunch of stuff to be decided yet. The Oilers clamping down defensively. 2.40 to go here in this third period of play. 5-4 for the Edmonton Oilers as this one's played back to the near side boards. Kempe is going to go back into the middle of the ice and now cross in center and in on the attack is Arvidsson. He gets it down low against Dayarnay, but Dayarnay is able to battle it free. And Yamamoto's first of the playoffs from Ryan McLeod and Clean Costin, who picks up point number three tonight. Write a storybook clean. Thank you so much for showing up when it matters most. That is three points on tie breaking goals. For Clean Costin tonight. 2.08 to go here in this third period of play to know. Playing it back into the Oilers zone. Now inside the hardest part of every series. The final two minutes of trying to clinch the series right here, right now. As this one is going to get going. Back in behind the Oilers net. Stuart Skinner out to play it for a brief moment. But it now is cleared as Corpus Salo makes the save last second. Holy that is about as unreal of a save as you see from a goalie going to the bench. As this one's going to be dumped in. Skinner's out to play the puck. He will glove it down and hold on to it, my friends. As we will have a stop gym play. Corpus Salo will go to the bench. And I believe the Kings will likely here use their timeout as Corpus Salo saves an empty net goal. Tipping it away last second. That is a desperation play. I have no clue how Corpus Salo got a hold of that puck. But he was able to do it and tip it into the corner as Corpus Allo is on the bench, friends. And we will have the face-off in the Oilers' zone after a nice save there for Stuart Skinner. So we have a timeout on the play, friends. So this is where I'm going to run you through all the numbers right here. This could be it for this series. Who's to say? Not me. But if you're new to the channel, I need you to hit that subscribe button tonight, friends. We started at 12,080 subscribers here on the channel tonight we're going to finish well over and i can tell you this well over 12,150. i would love to have you hit that subscribe button it's free would love you back here for whether it be game seven or whether it be the um well guess what whether it be yeah end of the day round two against the vegas golden knights that's for sure so would be fantastic but as we also get there if you uh all right, all curious what we've been able to manage here on this live stream tonight. Just give you a random round number to work with as we are up to, well, a big old grand total of 1,481 hours on the stream. So we will indeed crush off 
a grand total of $1,500 on the stream. Thank you so much for being along for the ride. If I don't get a chance to tell you that, the rest of the way home after this puck drops, Kopitar battles it here as this one comes to the near side boards. Kings win it back to the point as they will try and work with the puck here to keep this one from going home as this will be shot out of the zone by the Oilers, tipped down off the glove of Dursey. Buck 20 remaining here in this third period as we continue to work up out of the zone. Now the Kings get in on the attack. Turned back quickly by the Oilers. Doughty in front of his own empty net with a buck 10 to go. 70 seconds to go here as this one's going to be fired in by Fiala to the far side. Now picked up there by the Kings' Kopitar. Kopitar works this one to Arvidsson. Arvidsson looking, looking, looking for something to do. Back to the point now. Doughty down low. This one hops a stick. Kopitar around the boards. And now Evander Kane will pick this one up. He will take a spin shot. 47 seconds to go as this is coming down to the wire. 42 now on the clock. As the Oilers will see the time continue to wind down. 36 seconds. Stuart Skinner out to play this puck. Ekholm winds it around the boards. Fiala comes up with it as the Kings can't get it going. Nice play there by the Oilers to get it out of the zone. And this one now with 24 seconds to go. The Kings yet to set up sustained zone pressure. They will try and do it right here right now with 16 seconds to go. As this is going to come out free. I don't know where this puck is. The Oilers have it. They're just killing clock here. Keep and play and keep away. Seven seconds to go, friends. Yes, indeed. The Edmonton Oilers go on to round number two against the LA Kings behind a five-goal performance in game number six to clinch the series and send us home with sweet victory as that is a huge time accomplishment here as they out battle Stuart Skinner's lack of saves. They get a game-winning goal from Kyler Yamamoto who is absolutely getting mobbed by the Edmonton Oilers. And friends, that will conclude six games of pure insanity between us and the LA Kings for the year 2023. The Oilers get it done in one more game sooner than they did last year. But friends, to right now, I want to say this to my LA Kings friends watching this live stream right now. Thank you so much for spending these past six games here on Dolany TV with me. You know, and you came in here knowing that this is an Edmonton Oilers channel through and through. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me every moment of your time that you did. Thank you for sharing your passion for the Kings, sharing your passion for hockey and the NHL with me. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you guys aboard. And like I said, I can only summarize it best. Please come back, hate watch the series between the Oilers and the Golden Knights here in round two. Because I would love to have you, right? If you, right, you were hating on the Oilers or enjoying the series between the Oilers and Kings, well, now you can enjoy or hate watch the Oilers and Golden Knights going forward. Thank you so much to everybody for being aboard. I know a lot of you will clear out here right away. Billy, thank you so much for the dono on the board right there. But friends, there's not much left to say to end this one except for properly play La Bamba, baby. We did it. We did it. The Oilers move on to round two. We've got handshakes out there right now. Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers leave no doubt in game six that they are leaving LA with the victory. It is absolutely huge. I mean, honestly, right? I, I came into it this morning. We knew that maybe Connor McDavid's nicked up. Maybe Evander Kane's nicked up. Uh, at the end of the day, all it came down to is we just needed to finish this here. Don't give the LA Kings a reason to end our playoff journey early if we advance in game seven. So it was just one of those things. We just needed to get this job done here tonight. And that's exactly what the Edmonton Oilers managed to do tonight. It was fantastic to see. And now bring on the Vegas Golden Knights who earlier this week eliminated the Winnipeg Jets. Obviously, we've seen everything that's happened um, for the Jets over the past few days since being eliminated. But now the Vegas Golden Knights are going to need a big time effort against this Oilers team because they are coming in. There's the Vin and Stu uh, big time celebration, hug, uh, high five there. That was fantastic to see. Jack Campbell proud of, or not Jack Campbell, sorry, Jay Woodcroft proud of his two young 
Bakersfield call-ups that have been fantastic this game. And it looks like Stuart Skinner will get an on-the-bench interview here with um, somebody to finish off this one. But we are moving on to game number one of, yes, indeed, the, uh, the second round. That feels so good. Guys, like... Right, the nerves are all the way up here, and now the relief that's what I'm feeling. I guess that's the term. The relief is all the way at the exact other side, so that's where we sit right now. Brian, uh, thank you for being along for the ride. I hope you do enjoy that beverage for sure. And uh, that's where we find ourselves now, friends. Finally, for the first time in franchise history, the Edmonton Oilers will go up against the Vegas Golden Knights in the playoffs. And hey, bring on Vegas, right? I think you see the elation at Rogers Place. The Oilers in Vegas have had some absolute classic games this season, and I know they've had some classics over the past few years, and now it is uh, time and dandy to go and have an absolute classic series against the Vegas Golden Knights. Friends, this is where we will switch over with all of you watching live. I've wrapped it up as best I can. I can repeat myself a couple more times if you'd like, or we can just record the live pre -game, or post game together. And we can finish this off right here, right now. All right, you ready? Again, friends, if you're heading out, though, make sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out. That would be greatly appreciated. And let's do this right in fashion. So here we go. Double finger snaps on. This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Play La Bomba, baby. We got the series victory. Yes, indeed. That's all that matters at the end of the day. The Edmonton Oilers... Yeah, it's an ugly one. It's 5-4. It's not quite pretty. Stuart Skinner could have been better. This could have been better. That could have been better. But the Edmonton Oilers, the big number here is they take home four games in the series against the LA Kings to advance home to round two against the Vegas Golden Knights. We'd love to see it, obviously. The boys will have to figure out the travel plans and how to best figure out how to get to Vegas and all that. But that is for another time at this point as we are... Just going to sit back and enjoy this one tonight. The Edmonton Oilers on the back of the most unlikely hero on the team, Kyler Yamamoto, come away with the series victory in game number six over top of the LA Kings. Friends, welcome aboard to Dolany TV. If you're new to the channel, I want you to hit that subscribe button here on the channel because I want you aboard for round two, right? If you're an Oilers fan, I want you aboard for round two against the Vegas Golden Knights. We need to talk about it. And obviously, right, if we win round two, you think I'm amped up right now? Could you imagine winning round two? Let's go. It's been a heck of a year this year so far, and I just want this to continue because it is dang, dang special. All right. Anyway, what do we need to know? Well, what we need to know is that we're playing La Bamba, and I imagine La Bamba is playing all across the Oilers Nation right now. This is it's fantastic to see. But what I need to also see is just to tell you that this Edmonton Oilers team comes away with a huge victory. Kyler Yamamoto scoring a massive, massive goal. And I want to say again to all of my Kings friends that are tuning in to tonight's Pulse game that have been along on the channel here over the past few weeks, thank you so much for being aboard. Thank you so much for sharing your passion for hockey with me. And you know what? Thank you for making this series so dang special. With that, friends, shall we go recap what was a nine-goal frenzy to get the Oilers onto the second round, led by the starting goal, a buck 25 into the game from Captain Connor McDavid. All the questions all week long. Is he injured? Is he broken? Is he going to be okay? Are the Kings going to target him? What's going to happen? Connor McDavid answers the critics right out of the gate. A nice tip play on a shot pass from Evan Bouchard. Puts it home five hole. Matthias Ekholm draws the assist secondarily. And it's a 1-0 lead for the Oilers. Then Sean Dersey, seven minutes later, responds for the Kings. Scores his first of the series, his only one of the playoffs this year. Kevin Fiala, Quinton Byfield pick up the assist. Clean Costin scores his second goal of the playoffs to instantly give us the lead back. Four minutes later, McLeod, Dayarnay pick up assist. Then Drysaddle piles on on the power play, picks up his seventh of the series. McDavid's tenth point, Bouchard's eighth assist as well. Kempe and Fiala and Victor Arvidsson combined for a goal. Kempe, I must say, I honestly have to tell you this right now. Kempe and Fiala, I was told that they were going to run amok and absolutely destroy us in this playoff series, and they came this close, my friends. They were un- 
unbelievable all playoff series long. It was fantastic to see them just do what they did. The top heavy Kings is what it came out to be in this playoff series, but they came to play all series long, right? Fiala played five games or four games, something like that, and came away with six points. Fantastic. Kempe, I don't know what to say about this guy. Goal after goal after goal. Beauty, 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 beauty. And I honestly have to say I'm very impressed. I'm very hopeful for the future of the LA Kings because it looks like they've got some dynamo players coming up the system. Victor Arvidsson picked up another assist there. So that meant those back-to-back -back power play markers tied us at three. Things were getting sketchy as an Edmonton Oilers fan base. But when in doubt, call the folk hero. Clean Costin cleans up the mess. Makes it 4-3 heading into the third period. Yamamoto, who right, quiet all series, picks up his first assist. DeHarnay picked up his second assist. So you think about these depth scores, right? Drysdale and McDavid score two goals and combine for two goals. But guess what? It's actually the depth guys that win this game for the Edmonton Oilers. And that's what's different this year. Deneau scores a shorthanded, unassisted marker. It is about the ugliest goal to tie a hockey game in the third period of a playoff elimination game you could possibly get against Stuart Skinner. Gaffs it up like Ty Conklin, Mike Smith-esque. Puck screw up with it, but he gets it done and pulls off the save after save the rest of the way home to allow, with just over three minutes to go, Kyler Yamamoto to throw a puck on net, fool Jonas Corposalo, pick up an assist for Ryan McLeod and clean cost, and who had a three-point night, and secure victory for the Edmonton Oilers in game number six. The Oilers take home the 4-2 series victory. 44-26 to the shots for the LA Kings over top of the Edmonton Oilers. 32-22 to the hits for the Kings over top of the Oilers. The Oilers won the face-off battle. Kings were better on the special teams. The Oilers took more penalties. The Oilers gave away the puck 10 times to the Kings 3. I mean, the takeaways were dead even, but the Oilers also very well committed to blocking the shots tonight, and that is a big difference for as to why they were able to do their thing tonight. So, friends, that's where we find ourselves. I just, I mean, to wrap up this series, could it have been much better effort from the Edmonton Oilers? I think absolutely, right? I think you could absolutely say the Edmonton Oilers at times and going forward need to be better and will be better. But it's one of those things, you know what, for what it was, for all the overtime, for all the heroes, for all the antics we had all series long, I am just glad that we are good to go and we are ready and geared up to face the Vegas Golden Knights in round number two. There was a time in game four when we were down 2-1 People were ready to jump off the bandwagon and abandon ship. And somehow the Oilers pull off three straight victories. Game four, game five, game six. Bang, done and dusted and take home the victory that ends up getting us going into game number one of the second round. And it looks like there was actually a crack on Stuart Skinner's stick. His stick snapped in half on that. That's actually what happened. They slowed it down finally enough for me to see. So that ugly goal against Stuart Skinner ends up being a broken stick. And that is really tough to see. So friends, that's how it wraps up. A 5-4 victory, a 4-2 series victory. And the supporting cast that we have seen develop and evolve all season long comes through in the clutch. And guess what? Matthias Janmark is waiting on deck for the start of the Vegas Golden Knights series. That is fantastic news for me as well. But friends, as I wrap up this game review for you, I don't want to keep you too much on your Saturday night. You're probably like me, running out of a bar, being a maniac as the Oilers eliminate the LA Kings. But what I have to tell you is thank you so much for being along for the ride here through the first round of the playoffs. I cannot wait to start this second round of the playoffs here against the Vegas Golden Knights in round number two, game one. Coming up sometime this week, Kyler Yamamoto plays La Bamba for Oil Country, and we ride home on this weekend victorious in round one over top of the LA Kings. I'm Tyson, this is Stolony TV. Thank you so much for being aboard, friends. I am up on out of here. And friends, that'll pretty much do it for the live stream. Again, Cold Lake Kid, thank you so much for the dono right there, throwing 220 on the board. 
Ah, uh, yeah, no, it was a fantastic first round, guys. And now, you know what? We get to go home and finish this one off. Again, to everybody tuning in from the LA Kings fan base that's still along for the ride right now, thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing your fandom with me. Really do appreciate you being along for the ride here, right? I mean, we've talked about the big numbers all live streams long here during the playoffs. I've set consecutively from game one all the way through game six. There is nothing better in oil country kind of live stream stuff that I've done. Oilers live streams over my 10 years that are better than any of game one through six of this series. So hopefully we end up topping that by far in round two. We'll find out the Leafs, the Oilers, both advance tonight to get on to round two. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being along tonight. It's a special night as the Oilers go on to take on the Vegas Golden Knights in round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs in 2023. I'm Tyson, this is Stolany TV.